Austin is dwindling to a precious couple of weeks in that school from Austin. Led by Big 12 rushing leader Cedric Benson is playing its best football of the year. Sixth ranked Texas is set against conference foe Kansas. Last week the Longhorns scored an unbelievable comeback win against Oklahoma State. Today they land in Lawrence to test one of the toughest defenses in the Big 12. Texas and Kansas. Scherzer's X's in Texas. They'll be hard-hitting football in Kansas today. It's all next on after game time, 44 degrees. And the wind chill, a little bit uh, cooler than that. A couple of moments ago, Jim Knox down on the field with Mark Mangino. Coach, what's the formula of knocking off the sixth-ranked team in the nation, Texas Longhorns, today? Well, one of the things we got to try to do is we got when we play a team like Texas, you got to try to out hustle them. You got to take care of the football on offense. We got to create some turnovers on defense. Our defense has done a good job all year against the run. We got to continue to slow down the run, and not give them big plays, and we got a chance. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Texas won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will kick off Richmond McGee, who's the punter, also kicks off for Texas. Big kid, 6'4", 200-pounder, junior from Garland, Texas. It'll be Clark Green and Greg Hagens. Green is 30. Hagens is number 25, back deep for the Jayhawks. They come in at 3-6. and six. They have... An interesting record in that they could very easily be six and three. They've lost several close games. This along the ground taken by an up back and out to the 35 yard line. Cullen Homolka. So good field position for Kansas after the 17 yard return. They have had injury problems at the quarterback spot. Thus, it's fifth-year senior and former walk-on out of Palomar Junior College, John Nielsen getting the start. 6'3", 215 pounds. He's from San Diego. Not a great arm, and he's not a tremendous athlete. What he is is exceptionally bright, and he's very poised, and he played quite a bit last week for the injured Jason Swanson. Uh, left tackle moved early and have that to start the game. Uh, Matt Thompson, the transfer from Air Force, false start, the left side of the line. Well, a false start by number 77 of the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still first down. The left guard as well, Bob Whitaker, left side of that line, flinching too soon. And you know, you, you talk about uh, quarterback Nielsen, what he has to do today, Drew. You, you mentioned how his arm strength is average at best. He has to throw with anticipation and accuracy. Ball placement is going to be the big factor for him today. Randall's at the tailback in the I formation. The up back's Austin Wabusi. Well, this is not his strength. They run a little option, and Larry Dibbles moved down the line of scrimmage and gobbled him up. So it'll be second down and about 15 yards to go. Here's the offensive line for Kansas. Cesar Rodriguez, Cesar Rodriguez gets it started right tackle. The best of the bunch up front is Joe Vaughn, the center. He's a senior. John Randall's special. He's a freshman running back. He's been dinged a little bit, but he's very talented. And he's had a high ankle sprain, Drew. It's been a problem. And the screen was set up. But the misconnection. And now it is third and long as you take a look at the defenders. For the Texas Longhorns, only two seniors start on defense for Texas. And they have been very good this year. Rod Wright is a junior from Houston. He's a load. Everybody knows about Derek Johnson, finalist for the Lombardi, the finalist for the Butkus Award. Brown, Huff, Giger in the secondary, along with Seth Griffin, one of the fastest Longhorns. They bring four. Nielsen throws underneath. And this is going to be very close, and it will be a first down now. Lionel Anderson out of Rochester, New York. He caught it underneath, Dave. He needed to run about seven or eight yards to get to the sticks, and he ends up with an 18-yard advance. Move the chains for Kansas. 6'3", 250 pounds, and you just saw his strength catching the football and doing something after catch. You see him running a little shallow cross here. There he comes into the picture. And now he separates. He runs away from the 
linebackers, and also the safety. That's pretty good foot speed for a guy 250 pounds. And they hand it to Wabusi, and he takes it straight ahead for about four yards. What did Greg Robinson tell us a couple of days ago about Anderson? Yeah, he really liked him. He, Anderson, he said, caught three big third down receptions against Colorado. Greg Robinson, formerly the Denver Broncos and Kansas City Chiefs, defensive coordinator in the National Football League. He really likes the tight end. You know, he said, hey, they got somebody there. This kid, uh, Lionel Anderson's a player. And He's actually told some NFL scouts about uh, Anderson. They didn't really have him on the radar screen, but Greg Robinson has put him there. And he's on Texas's radar screen right now. They fake to Randall. Nielsen throws on the backside, and that's complete to 83 Simmons. A junior from DeSoto, Texas. Well, Nielsen is poised. He is, but Nielsen knows everybody's assignment on every single play. That gives you a lot of confidence in the huddle when your quarterback knows what everybody's responsibility is. He's a good decision maker. He looks down the football field, he ciphers things quickly, quick-minded quarterback. Give me a quick-minded quarterback and you can win some football games. That's what Mark Mangino's thinking. You won't see any busted plays today, Drew. He completed two out of three balls last week, 67% of his attempts. You know what, you, you complete that many passes, you're gonna move the pig. And he did, he moved the football pretty darn well last week. You know, I like stories like John Nielsen's. Out of Palomar Junior College, he had opportunities to play maybe at the 1AA level, Division II level, certainly, and, and get some money for his education. He said, I want to challenge myself. I want to play big-time college football. Right. He walks on at Kansas, and he's really finally getting an opportunity here in the late stages of his senior year. And you know what? He, this is what he'll always remember. Well, and, and the other thing is, Drew, and I remember as a, as a former lineman, when you have a guy like this, you want to do more for him. Block a little harder. Give him an opportunity. They're responding to him. They're responding to his leadership. They're gravitating toward him. He is the guy, and they're playing well in front of him. Third down and very short. Snuck him in there behind Big Joe Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn's a good player. He's got a bad neck right now, yeah. but it, you remember from playing. You ever healthy in November? No, this time of year you don't feel good at all. And his, his neck, he can't even look to his right without turning his whole body to, to look. To, he can't just turn his head to the right. And it's senior day, though, and this is a senior. This is a captain. This is a guy who is Big 12 Newcomer of the Year as a center. Usually it's quarterbacks, running backs, that type of position. Very, very good technician. Plays with low pad level. And Vaughn and Rodriguez, the right tackle, didn't take any snaps in practice all week, but they're out here today working. Randall hasn't touched it yet. He's got it here. And a minimal gain up right near the line of scrimmage was Terrell Brown, the cornerback. Yeah, it was a cornerback blitz off the slot. You know, it's almost like Greg Robinson was, was listening to the play call in the huddle because he brought Terrell Brown. Watch him. He's going to sneak in here, and here he comes on the blitz. He is going to make a play. For, he's going to hit him in the backfield. That's just a perfect call for that run. Unblocked. Slot corner blitz. Chalk one up for Greg Robinson. Second and nine. Nielsen. And he's got a complete big target there is Brandon Rideau, the senior from Beaumont, Texas, and he'll have a first down. Rideau is a, is a very consistent performer recently for Kansas. His problem has been inconsistency. One thing he does is block kicks. He blocked a couple of punts against Tulsa, so look at how long he is. He's got the long legs, long arms. He plays even taller than he is, and he's pretty darn tall to begin with at 6'4". Looks like a praying mantis out there. Just long everywhere. Here's Randall. And he'll get it to the 25-yard line on the ninth play of this drive for Kansas. You know, John Randall is, is a very special football player for this uh, Kansas offense. He is their best player. And this is earlier in the season against Texas Tech. He takes a screen pass, lets his blocker set up, shows the patience, takes it to the house. Back-to-back -back rushing games, 105 yards against Nebraska and Kansas State. Two defenses that stopped the run pretty well. He lit them both up. Got quick feet, and he's got great balance. Nielsen, ball's batted away. It'll be incomplete. 
Larry Dibbles got a piece of it the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at our Napa. Keys to victory today for the University of Kansas. What has to happen? Well, no turnovers. You know, take the football away. Don't give it away. They've got 24 takes on the season amongst the country leaders. 16 interceptions by eight different players. Limit the three and outs. I thought the way the game started out with the penalty, third and long, they were going to go three and out in the first possession. But big old tight end Lionel Anderson answered that one. And then special teams have to be special. Make a big play in the kicking game. Avoid the big mistake. They need the 17-yard line. Nielsen throws, and Rideau is the intended target. And it'll be fourth down. So we'll see the field goal unit. And this will be in the neighborhood of 45 yards. And this is going to be a problem for Kansas converting in this area. Nowhere to go with the football, but he, Nielsen found a spot over the safety in front of the corner. Should have been caught. Should have been caught. He's right, but as a team, they're one for eight from this distance. Beck is one for six from 40 to 49 yards. Webb is 0 for two. So this has been a problem area, a struggle for Kansas converting in this range. 44 yards away. Beck got a lot of football. The wind, little factor. Yeah, but he pulled it to the left. So Kansas moves the football against Texas, but they can't put any points on the board. Now, Texas is 18 and 3 in the month of November under Matt Brown. They're also 8 and 1, Drew, for the third time in the last four years. There's been a whole lot of winning in Austin since the arrival of Matt Brown. Cedric Benson is going to lose yards. Nick Reed says hello in the backfield. Not a surprise there. Number seven has made plays all year long. Averaging just under 10 tackles a game, Drew. Number two in the Big 12. 11 tackles for loss. Number six in the Big 12. And he tested those shoulder pads early. Vince Young's a sophomore. Last week, 18 of 21 in the great comeback against Oklahoma State, including... A school record 12 in a row to finish the game. That broke a mark held by Chris Sims from a few years ago, and he hit 11 in a row in a game. You know, two interceptions he threw, so 20 of the 21 passes didn't hit the ground. He's finding people. This one's on the ground. And then he gets it to Tony Jeffrey. So he made something positive as of what it could have been, uh, what could have been a near disaster. Here's the offensive line for Texas. Typically, it's outstanding. Once again, it is. You like those tackles, Scott, I do. And Blaylock. I like, and, I like Blaylock a lot and Scott. Yeah. Tell you what, uh, Glenn's a good player as well. And the skilled guys, Lima Sweet. What did you say, Prank Mantis earlier? <laughs> describing uh, right. describing Rido. Brandon Rido. Yeah. Uh, Sweet's in the same form. He's 6'5". Kansas calling a timeout. Don't like uh, the personnel matchups and going to talk it over. We'll step aside as well. 10-10 to go opening quarter. Kansas and Texas score. Big day of college football. Third and two. Young wants to keep, and he'll get around the corner. And he gets out of bounds at the 41-yard line. First down for Texas. Kansas defensively, this has been the strength of this club this year. In fact, they have improved dramatically in three years under Mark Mangino. Jermile Ashley up front. McMillan really comes off the edge. The linebackers as good a group as we've seen at Kansas in quite some time, led by Toomey and Reed. Floodman's played a lot of football, fifth-year senior. And in the secondary, Tony Stubbs will get your attention. And there's number three, Charles Gordon. He is something. Big hit on Benson, and he carries a tackler for a couple of yards. 56% of Benson's yards after contact for his career. That says something about finishing runs. Six foot, 225 pounds as we glance at the Napa. Keys to victory for Texas. Well, Texas wants to be physical, win at the line of scrimmage. They're 56-0 under Mac Brown when they outrush the opponent. They want to have balance, be able to throw it as well as run the ball effectively when, when Kansas loads up the box and handle Randall. John Randall's uh, number one in Greg Robinson's eyes to take care of. And this is Swede, runs a little outcut, and he'll get the first down and more to the 45-yard line. Gordon in front in of Herman. Charles Gordon. You know, and, and speaking of Randall, that's who Vince Young reminds me of, Randall Cunningham. When I look at Vince Young, I see a Randall Cunningham-type player. He's got that athletic ability. 
I'll never forget the play that he made against the Giants when he was chopped to the ground and he just balanced himself one hand and takes it in for a touchdown. This guy, Vince Young, has those same type of characteristics in space, and he's still learning to throw the football like Randall got done. He keeps and he's dropped by Gordon. He got about five yards to the 39 yard line. How about this? Kansas has not given up their defense has not given up a first quarter touchdown this year. Yeah, they thought scored the opposition by 50 points in the first quarter 65 to 15. You talked about it earlier Drew. Five of their six losses are by a total of 19 points. They have outscored the opposition by 14 points in their three and six for the year. They've outscored people by two touchdowns. They've lost a lot of close games. Benson keeps the football. He gets blown up by McMillan in the backfield. Also, Charlton Keith. It's a good first step McMillan has. Very explosive at the line of scrimmage. Talked about the improvement that Kansas has had defensively. Their coordinator, Bill Young, has simplified things. Look at McMillan just taking David Thomas backwards. I mean, drove him back, then shed the block. That is a big time play. It's a mismatch. Defensive end on tight end when McMillan gets that, started to drool a little bit and made the play. There's actual Hazelhorst, not Keith. Hazelhorst, number 72 in there as well. Third down and nine for Young. Pressure coming. Young gets it away. McMillan. That's McMillan off the edge. He can really move that 250 plus pounds. And I'll tell you the, the matchup McMillan on Jonathan Scott. Something to watch all game long. Watch it on the left side. McMillan's outside the tight end. And he gets a good takeoff. And Jonathan Scott is is doesn't get off the ball as quickly as McMillan. And with that wide rush over the defense, over the tight end, outside the tight end. David McMillan beat Jonathan Scott off the football and get the hit on Vince Young's legs from the backside. Then, then he lowered the body weight, made a hard left-hand turn, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He, he made it a short corner. McGee trying to get it to the corner. Gordon's going to handle it at the 10. He's a gutsy kid. And he saved some yardage there for Kansas. They'll have it at their own 14 when we come back. We'll move Roy Williams gone. Diving ahead is Wabusi. And Wabusi will have a first down out to the 27-yard line. He didn't get a lot of touches, Dave. No, he let the big dog eat. Wabusi not dragging a Kabusi here now. Look at him hit the line of scrimmage. Little trap, nice trap blocked by Whitaker. And up the gut goes Wabusi. I mean, the Red Sea parts, great blocking up front by the Kansas offensive line. A little inside trap. Got, got free. I saw you reading your Dr. Seuss this morning. I like that. <laughs> Wabusi Kabusi. I was wondering why you had the Dr. Seuss out. Ah, uh, green eggs and ham. Yes, I am. Well, we'll sort this one out. You know, you made a great point a few moments ago, Dave. Dead ball foul. A false start That's by number 69 starts. of the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still first down. And those are the kind of penalties, Drew, that drive Mark Mangino nuts. You hate the pre-snap penalties, you know? You, you hate that kind of thing. And, and, you, and you, can't, uh, you can't flinch up there. The boys up here have to hold their water. You can't be flinching. That's a big flinch. You can't do that. You're in that three-point stance. You have to absolutely be patient. Three-step drop. Nielsen throws a slant. Good catch by Simmons, who's a little behind him. And he's out to the 34-yard line. The point you were making is that Kansas has been in every game. Their 3-6 and six record is a little bit deceiving. The one game that looks lopsided, 41-10 loss to Oklahoma, that's a 14-10 game at halftime. It is. I mean, Kansas plays like this with a high energy level, and that's just a great adjustment to the football by Simmons, showing the flexibility, the hip flexibility to turn and catch the ball with his upper body behind him like that. That's an outstanding effort. And that's exactly what Kansas has given every the start of every game out, scoring people by 50 in the first quarter. Great effort. Little waggle, Nielsen. Oh, I like it. Shuttle to Randall. And he'll be close to a first down. He was tackled by Brian Robison, sophomore from Splendora, Texas. Let's get it downstairs to Jim Knox. High ankle sprain is when the tibia and fibula, the two leg bones, actually separate a little bit. They pull apart. And you, you mess up the ligaments and tendons in there, and that's a very, very tough injury depending on the severity. Two tight ends on third and one. 
Randall will lower his pad level. And it's going to be close. Roderick Wright, he's hard to move at 305 pounds. Athletic too, Drew. You know, I mean, he's got some athletic skills. And he didn't get it. He did not get it from the spot. And when you're on your own 37-yard line, you have to punt the football. That's where short yardage defense starts. And look at Roderick Wright right there. He was the backside defensive tackle, but he got so much penetration so quickly, he was able to cut the corner off real quickly and get Randall before he got to the line of scrimmage. That was a great play by Roderick Wright. Aaron Ross back deep, Kyle Tucker, and they fake it. Wow. And Simmons came up with the football, or didn't come up with it. But it's going to be interference. Yeah. Interference is going to be called on Terrell Brown. You know, they snapped it to Nick Reed, who was a former quarterback exactly. when he arrived, and then flipped to defense. Exactly. So your personal protector, even though he's a linebacker, he can throw the football. And what Kansas talked about during the course of the week was having these bullets in the chamber and firing the bullets. They are going to be aggressive. They're three and six. Texas is trying to make the BCS. There's Reed. Watch the direct snap to him, the personal protector. He doesn't get enough trajectory on the football, underthrown, but boy, that's a great effort by Simmons to go up and almost catch it. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. But, but Brown, you cannot. Brown has to turn around and find the ball. He never did find the football. There's the direct snap to Reed and watch the route. Brown never turns to find the ball. Simmons climbs his back. Brown interferes. It's just a gutsy call by Kansas with that field position. If it doesn't work, Drew, short field for the Longhorns. Well, Dave, you touched on it. it it's the old equation. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. It's, it's the middle of November. Kansas went to a bowl game for the first time since 95 last year in the second year for Mark Mangino. They're not going bowling this year. They're three and six with two games left. And incredibly, Mac Brown didn't like the call much, but I, I thought it was the right call. This this Kansas D, uh, Kansas football team has never been to back-to-back -back bowl games in, in, in history, which is remarkable. They've had a lot of great football teams here. You're right, Drew. They went to a bowl game last year for the first time in nine years, but they have not, never gone back to back, and looks like that's going to continue. But I'll tell you what, they are going to give Texas all they can handle today because they're throwing caution to the wind, plus they're throwing fake punts to the wind. They're doing it all. Mark Mangino says, our kids are excited about playing Texas and BCS team. Our kids want to compete. Nielsen out of the gun. Now he can throw it. Gordon can't throw it. And down the football field he looks. It's a jump ball. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Michael Huff, who was not fooled. No, he wasn't at all. And then a little flag for, I think, celebration. But Gordon lofted this thing, and it just hung up there. And, you know, you, you look at... Uh, it wasn't there. He should have... I mean, it's easy to say he doesn't get an opportunity to throw the ball frequently. Right. Probably, he should have thrown it away or run with it. Exactly. If that wasn't there. Don't force it. Four out of five. Now four out of six interceptions by Michael Huff. His first five interceptions, four of them he took back for touchdowns. The last two... In fact, his first four his career he's taken back for touchdowns. The last two interceptions he hasn't been. Well, That's a big play. He was just playing center field. They're going to call on sportsmanlike conduct a a, against Texas. Now, now, here's the thing with Huff. You, you mentioned all the touchdowns going back. His teammates, when he picked off his fifth, and after that, when he dropped a couple, they said, you don't want to pick any off unless you think you can take it to the house now. They started giving him is. a hard time. There he is making a great read on the ball. He's just watching the football. He's, he's you know, it's a zone the defense. On the field and an official ran into it. Oh, it's coach was on the sideline. That's after what they're calling. The and it's a first down. They could, you can't, you can't uh, be tripped by, as an official, you can't be tripped by a coach on the Texas sideline, and that's what happened. That's the unsportsmanlike call. It happened in the National Football League as well. You can't, you have to see the white five-yard area, the white area on the sidelines. There's a big white five-yard zone that you have to, there's the corner of it right there. You have to have only one designated coach in that five-yard area. Everybody else has to be free and clear, and the official tripped over somebody. And, Cost him 15. Young's going to keep. He cuts back. What a move. Just tripping him up was Nick Reed. The thing that Charles Gordon had to do on that play, though, don't force it. It wasn't there. Throw the ball away. And the turnover was committed by Kansas, not by Texas. Two interceptions, though. 
And Benson breaks the tackle. Here's Cedric Benson with room to roll. And he's finally chased down. Cedric Benson broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. And that was and defense. Stubbs caught him after 42 yards. And that was uh, Ashley, the big defensive lineman. The tackle he broke at the line of scrimmage, Drew. I mean, that's just, Ashley's got penetration. Can't arm tackle Cedric Benson. 56% of his yards after contact. And this guy, you know, you have to think that he's a finalist, one of the five guys going to New York. His body of work, not only this year, but for his career. He has now passed, passed Archie Griffin, former teammate of mine with the Bengals, two-time Heisman Trophy winner at Ohio State number eight, all-time rusher. They're gonna throw it back to Thomas. Tight end screen. And Thomas, a very athletic tight end, one of two athletic tight ends for the Longhorns, along with Bo Scaife, the sixth-year senior. That'll knee problems. Great. Watch all the actions going to go this way. Tight end's going to float back here for the screen, and then linemen are going to get out in front of him. The action is going to take the defense one way. Here comes the tight end. Watch the offensive line get out here for blocking. There's Thomas for the receiver. Excellent job. They get Kansas running one way, misdirection, throw back screen to the tight end. Good job by the O-line getting out there. Nice call. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for Texas. Here's Young on the zone read. And he takes a hit from Jermile Ashley. And he made the best open field tackler for Kansas miss in space, Rodney Harris. The safety was right there to hit him for no gain, maybe even a yard loss. He made Rodney Harris whiff. He's a tough guy. He's a long strider, but he's got jackhammer feet to go with the long stride. I mean, that's a tough combination. He can make you look silly in space. He does eat up some turf, doesn't he, with each one of those strides? Kind of glides along. Second and five. Here he comes. And there's Toomey. Gabriel Toomey, 235-pound junior Mike linebacker who started his career at Oklahoma. This was a very celebrated high school football player. He's come into his own here at Kansas after transferring. Here he is. Here's Toomey. Let's take a look. Number, he was second team all Big 12 last year. That is a good adjustment in space because, as we said, Vince Young in the open field can make you miss. Toomey did a nice job of changing direction, lowering his pad level and changing direction, mirroring Vince Young in space. Well, watch McMillan, the right end. He's working against Jonathan Scott on third and six. It Whoa. picked off. Kevin Cade. Young will get him. But Cade, flip side of the 50 to the 45. Mark Mangino said, if we're to pull the upset, we have to come up with some takeaways. Takeaways and kicking game are usually the key to big upsets. And Kane, there's a penalty flag on the, on the Kansas sideline. See what the penalty flag's about. But nice job by Kane. I think the flag was thrown well after the change of possession on the interception. 26 yards on the return. Mark Mangino wants an explanation. Our referee today is Cooper Castleberry. I wonder if they're calling too many. I don't, it looked like he was signaling Kansas has to stay off, off the field. Kane just reads the eyes. Look at Kane. He's coming across. He reads the eyes of Vince Young. That's just an outstanding play. Great call by Bill Young. He had his underneath linebacker doubling the crossing pattern. Vince Young with a, just a clothesline tackle. And, lost, and Kane actually lost the football as he hit the turf, so the, the turf can't cause a fumble. But just a great read by Kane, just focusing in on Young's eyes. Randall's in at the up back, or excuse me, at the tailback with Clark Green at the up back. And this was well covered. They tried to get it to Rideau, but Cedric Griffin was right underneath him. It'll be second down and 10. Kansas trying to snap a three-game losing streak. They blew a 14-0 lead last week after four minutes of play against Colorado. Ended up losing 30-21. Three and two at home this year. Trips to the near side. Nielsen all day to deliver the football, and he's got a man. 
Big gain to Henry. Marcus Henry, the freshman, his seventh catch of the year. He got isolated against Aaron Harris, a linebacker. And Henry is a heck of a story. We'll get to that story after we take a look at the play. And Nielsen says, I've got a wide receiver on a linebacker in zone. He's going to run away from him. I'm going there. Henry, look at the size of him as well. This kid is 6'4", 195 pounds. He signed with Kansas two days before fall camp opened. You know, nobody had signed him. He played an all-star game at Oklahoma. And a couple of uh, bird dog friends, Mark Mangino, he dominated that all-star game. Told Mangino about him. He signed two days before fall camp started. You talk about great speed to the football. Randall gobbled up by Aaron Harris and friends. Well, for a Dr. Pepper game break, what's happened to the Golden Gophers? Glenn Mason, who used to coach here oh, yeah. in Kansas, now up there, and they were a top 20 team the first month of the season. They're in the top, top 15. Now they're gone. Nielsen, and it is complete to Rideau. No, I, I like Nielsen now. Nielsen is getting the ball out of his hand quickly. And Kansas is doing a good job. It's three-step drop, the ball is out. Five-step quick drop, the ball is out. No seven-step drop, you know, don't mess with Texas's potential pressure. He is getting the ball out of there quick. Well, Dave, the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. Third down and seven. Well, he has been, as Mangino described, smart and very poised. He's unfazed by his first career start. Oh, oh it's dropped by Henry. He had it and lost it. He would have had a first down. He may have scored. If he catches that ball, he may split the defense and score. And, uh, you know, this kid, Nielsen, you got to love his ability to manage the game. And that's what he's doing now. Did Derek Johnson get a hand on that ball? Yeah. Oh, it's close. But uh, the thing that, it, that Derek Johnson did made Nielsen throw the ball a little bit behind the receiver because of the drop that Derek Johnson took. He got wide and deep very quickly. He's got so much speed. 39 yards away for Johnny Beck. He's perfect from this distance. And he will remain perfect. Five of five. And Kansas gets on the board first. And I'll tell you what, Dave, there's eight seconds left in this first quarter. And Kansas, for the most part, has outplayed Texas. And now they at least have something on the score. So Johnny Beck from 39 yards away. And Kansas leads it 3 to nothing. Lamont's Taylor, Terrell Brown back deep. This is Taylor. He's coming out of the end zone. Oh. And he's tripped up and he loses the football. They're going to say he's down. They're going to say he was down at the 14-yard line. McAnderson lit him up, though. Yep. Brandon Great McAnderson cover. did light him up. Let's take a look at, at what set this, this play up. Tremendous job by Kevin Kane. Excellent call by Bill Young. Blitz. And Kane has the backside linebacker has the doubling the underneath crossing route. Vince Young never saw him. And then Beck finalizes the takeaway with three points. They get on the board. All even now in takeaways, one apiece. Just an excellent call by Bill Young. Tremendous execution by Kane, who has been a very hot linebacker in terms of making plays for the Jayhawks. Here's an option look. Benson with a lead man. And he's tripped up Ball's by out. Tyree. Ball's out again. And they're going to get the football to Kansas. Now they're discussing it. And now they're going to say the ground caused the fumble. Right. The linesman was going to hand the football to Kansas. He marked it. He marked the ball where Kansas uh, they recovered it. Bobby Bernard, the field judge, came in and said, no, no, the ground caused the fumble. And, and Benson has put it on the ground, Dave, this year a few times. This is this is the fifth. They are, they're not going to call this a fumble, though. Was the ball out before you hit the ball? Was was out. Out. ball that was should have, out. Should have been the fifth fumble of his season. He's only lost one of them. He lost a fumble against Oklahoma, but Reed punches it out of there. Reed on the tackle punches it out of there with the right hand. No fumble, though. No call. First quarter history. Kansas. Back here, Kansas uh, up 3-0, and, and the cheerleaders love it. Let's take a look at the controversial play here. Did Cedric Benson fumble the football, ladies and gentlemen, of the cheerleading corps? Let's see. Nick Reed punches it out with the right hand. Knees not down. Ball's out. And I'll tell you what, the uh, the uh, line judge, Drew George, saw it. 
and he spotted where the ball was recovered, and he was overruled by okay, Bobby go. Bernard, the field judge. Second and short, they hand it to Will Matthews, and he'll have a first down to the 26-yard line. That play's huge. When you're talking about Kansas yep. with the football inside the 30-yard line of Texas. Well, in the NFL, the, the red beanbag would come out to challenge, and in the Big Ten, they have replay. In the Big 12, they don't have replay, and uh, Mark Mangino's saying we had one. And Nick Reed, what an active kid, former quarterback who's an athlete, they beef him up, play a little linebacker. That's what Joe Paterno did at Penn State for so many years. Ed O'Neill, former quarterback out of high school, like a lot of linebackers at Penn State over the years. Young out of the gut with Todd, and a good throw, and it's dropped by Bo Scaife. Scaife was huge last week in the come-from-behind win against Oklahoma State. You know what I thought was the biggest play of the game? It's going to sound strange. They're down 35-7. to seven. Scaife, with three seconds left, catches the ball, Dave, around the two-yard line. He reaches out and he gets the tip of the football over the pylon for a touchdown. Right. It makes it 35-14, so Texas had a little mojo going right. in the locker room, a little something. And they did, and prior to that, it took four downs for Oklahoma score, uh, State to score the touchdown that gave them 35 points, so they saw some fight left in the team. They were still battling, and Mack Brown said, let's go score. They did. Good move by Young to get away, and then oh. it's behind Scaife, and he took a shot on that knee, yes, he and did. he's had three ACL reconstructions. Fortunately, Bo's okay. Rodney Fowler lit him up, and, and Bo Scaife, six years at Texas, he's gotten medical hardship. This is his sixth season. Drops the ball and then takes the punishment. If you're going to get hit like Fowler hits you, you might as well get, squeeze the pig. And Bo Scaife is obviously in some pain right now. Third down and ten for the Longhorns. Jeffrey in the slot to the near side. And Young goes underneath. It's going to be short of a first down. Good coverage downfield. Swede pulls it in. Tony Stubbs tackled him immediately. And the Jayhawks will get off the field defensively. Yeah, they're playing very, very well right now. They're playing with a high energy level. Texas is not matching the energy level of Kansas. And there's a big old six foot five inch wide receiver that Stubbs says, you're all kinds of target for me take for the turf. Very, very secure tackle provided by Stubbs. Gordon back at his own 25-yard line. Richmond McGee averaging just under 41 yards a punt this year. And Gordon makes the catch at the 32-yard line. 13-33 to go in the second quarter. 3-0 Kansas as we take a look at the South Division in the Big 12. Oklahoma and Nebraska later on. Good to say those two teams in the same sentence. And Texas at 8 and 1. Still hopeful of a BCS Bowl bid. So much will be told in terms of this college football season over the next two weekends. And Iowa State, Dave, the way this season started for Dan McCarney's right. uh, club, can, can you imagine that Iowa State would be in the driver's seat in the North Division? They control their own destiny. They won the last two games, Drew. They have a bye this week, but Coach uh, Dan Mack and staff and players, kudos. Congratulations to come back like you have. We'll see Coach McCarney's Iowa State Cyclones in Manhattan, Kansas next week. And depending on what happens this afternoon with Kansas State and Colorado, that could be an enormous game. It would be a monster. And uh, you just never know. That's what you got to play it, play the season out, play every game to its uh, utmost. And Texas is trying to be the best one-loss team in the country right now. Cal is rated ahead of them. They're rated ahead of Georgia. If Georgia can upset Auburn, that would even help Texas more. They're trying to be the best one-loss team in the country for BCS purposes. Nielsen, this is a shuttle to Wabusi, and Harris has him, and then Derek Johnson got him around the ankle, and he wouldn't let go. Let's check in again with Jim Knox. Right. Plays on that right wrist, guys. Uh, uh, Nielsen ratings have been pretty good. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. Third down, Nielsen throws and he's a little bit short on the dig route trying to get it to Rideau we do have no, I thought for a second I saw a flag I do not so Rideau and Nielsen will come off the field and Kansas will have to punt the football back to Texas the good news is for Kansas the play was available if uh, Nielsen completes it it's a first down but the fact that he doesn't it's a one two three and out 
Kyle Tucker will punt it. Aaron Ross, who had the coverage a moment ago, is back deep. Kansas right now going toe to toe with the sixth ranked team in America. So the Longhorns will get it at the 29 yard line, a punt of 36 yards. Three day returns tomorrow, noon Eastern, nine out west on Fox. Best starting position for the Longhorns in this game, their own 30. And one on one out on the edge. And Tony Jeffrey, the senior, made a nice move, made Theo Baines miss in space. Yeah, he froze Baines. He froze him, and Baines is limping. Well, Baines has been limping for a week, Dave, and it's one of the reasons Ronnie Amati, number 17, has played a lot of football today, and he's on the field right, right. now, and, and Theo's going to hobble off. Yeah, it's, uh, he's not 100% physically, obviously, and uh, he tried. You know, he wants to play. It's the last home game for Kansas. It's senior day, and he gave it everything he's got, but doesn't quite have it all physically. Matthews and Benson behind Young, who is seemingly changing the play. And he'll throw it to Jeffrey this side. Got to call a hold, and they did. Yeah, they got Lima Swede. He kind of gobbled up Charles Gordon. And Charles Gordon got up and said, hey, that's not legal. Yeah. Swede, it was a, uh, you'd be proud if you were a wrestling coach. You know, you can't get the hands outside the framework of the body. That was a Greco-Roman deal there. He just took him down. Got his money's worth, but right in front of the officials. Gordon's the feisty little guy now. Gordon, you know, he's not going to Swede, 6'5", 210 pounds. Gordon, 5'11", 170. Says, I'm going to fight you. And there's the grab and the takedown. That's pretty good. He, got, he did get his money's worth. They almost did the gut wrench, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> roll him over, get some back points. Exactly. Exactly. And it, the, the record stands intact for the Jayhawks at this point. They have still not given up a first quarter touchdown defensively. And for the season now, 68 to 15, they have outscored the opposition by 53 points. So obviously, Mark Mangino and his staff, they put together great game plans. The guys come out with a high energy level. It's a matter of playing for 60 minutes. A lot of the teams have more depth and they roll more bodies in there. The Jayhawks kind of wear down. That's it. He'll get a couple of yards to me there defensively. Patrick Benson got quick feet. Efficient in their rush defense. And look at the improvement in, in just the last couple of years. Their team speed has increased dramatically. Young, it breaks down for him. Now wow. he delivers the football. And Lima Swede on the receiving end. He's just such a, a terrific athlete, David. And you look at him and you forget, he's 6'5", he's a, a solid guy, so you're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle in the backfield. And, and Hazelhorst uh, right here, he's going to blow a tire. He's going to blow a shoe. And, and look at Young. I mean, he's in the grasp of a linebacker, Kane, and as he's going down, throws it accurately and showing the arm strength to get it done. And, he can drop down and throw it from different angles. Young is a creator. And he is the improvisational king for sure. Third reception for Sweet. He picked up 15 there. Now they throw it again to Sweet. Nine yards on that advance to the 31-yard line of Kansas. One of the big reasons for the Kansas defensive improvement Bill Young said, I'm going to simplify. And when you make it simpler and you're more confident, you know where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, you play faster. And you talk about the team speed. They have more athletes. They're playing faster because they know exactly where they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to get there. And their gap control integrity is impeccable. They're not making mistakes in coverage. They're playing so much sound. They look like they're having fun. Yep. Hand it to Benson, and Benson nearly broke that one all the way. Holding on for uh, dear life was Rodney Harris. Benson, 56% of his yards after contact. He has phenomenal contact balance. Let's take a look at what he's done all season long. You talk about consistent. Look at the first three, four games, all over a buck 80. Oklahoma held him to the only game of the season under 100 yards. He's only eight yards short. He has been Mr. Consistency. This guy, number eight now, all-time rusher. He's one of five guys to rush for over 1,000 yards or more in four seasons. His body of work for the season for his career phenomenal. 
He's got the football again, and he stood up in the hole about the 16-yard line. I think he's been penalized, Dave, by his consistency. If that sounds strange, I mean, he, he just, he almost take it for granted he's going to get 150 every game. Right. And so nationally, you say, yeah, Cedric Benson, great player. And then they talk about Peterson. They talk about other players around the country. And, and well, you should talk about those players. But I believe he's one of the top five or six players in America. And, and his problem is there are two guys from USC, Leonard and Bushler being pushed, two guys from Oklahoma, White and Peterson. That only leaves one other spot, potentially. He's in the, in the tough spot. Look at this. One. Great cut there. Inside the wow. five. Touchdown on Q. Cedric Benson. And the Longhorns are in the end zone. Made Jerome Kemp miss. Jerome Kemp was the unblocked safety. And Cedric Benson said, Kemp, you're not taking me down one-on-one -on -one in the open field. I want to go to New York as a finalist, one of the five finalists for the Heisman Trophy. And I'm going to show everybody why. 66th touchdown of Cedric Benson's career. And he's now scored a touchdown in 36 games. That breaks the record. He Travis Prentice out of Miami of Ohio. He was tied with. Now Benson is by his lonesome. A touchdown in 36 career games. Wow. Dusty Mangum makes it 7-3. Here's Cedric Benson doing his thing. Two great cuts and a broken tackle. And the Longhorns are on top by four. 70. He's caught one pass. 18, 19 touchdowns on the season now. A scoring machine. 36 games. He scored at least a touchdown. That is, that's consistency right there. And you know, there's no real big, big he's not just a self-promoter. He scores, tosses the ball, the official go back to work. That goes out of bounds, so Kansas will get great field position. Great field position. Well, Mac Brown was talking about the Heisman candidacy of number 32 earlier this week. No, I think everybody needs to go back and look at Cedric over the next two weeks because he's as good a running back as there is in the country. If you look at his career here, it's one of the best in college football history and will go down in the record books that way. Um, he's the leading scorer in the nation. He's the second or third leading rushing, uh, running back in the nation. And, and our team's winning, Jim, but he's done a great job of blocking and catching the ball out of the backfield. As Derek Johnson changed the game defensively Saturday night, Vince and Cedric changed it offensively. And uh, he's been a great leader for us this year. And I think he's a guy that should win the Doak Walker Award. And I think he's a guy that should be in New York and get full consideration for the Heisman. Hard to argue with. Uh, I tell you what, it, it is a hard argument against. He's yeah. been terrific. Gary Hagans makes the catch there. You, you look at what Cedric Benson's not only done in his career, he's used to the spotlight, Dave. I mean, when he was at Midland Lee High School, he was uh, famous in high school circles, not only around the state of Texas, but around the country oh, yeah. by his sophomore year. And, and the thing that Coach talked about, he's improved his blocking, his running routes out of the backfield, catching the ball. He's a much more complete back now than he was back then. Now, this is Miss... Uh, here in the backfield, Nielsen has to eat the football. Somebody turned the wrong way. Yeah. He's going to run a lead to Randall. Let's take a Dr. Pepper game break. Thanks very much. 14-0 Arkansas. Third down and a yard to go. And Kansas will call their second timeout of this first half with 8.06 to go. 8.06 to go, guys. Oh, Randall got detonated at the 40-yard line. That option didn't fool anybody. Aaron Harris, Derek Johnson. We haven't talked a lot about Derek Johnson yet. So on third and one, they call timeout, and then they lose four yards. With a new quarterback running the option, DJ just blows Randall up. And uh, into the game came Brian Luke. I think on that broken play, I, th I thought that uh, Nielsen got hit kind of funny on that broken play, and Luke had to come in at quarterback. Tucker will punt it away. And Ross will get away from it, and it takes a KU bounce. A couple of them, in fact, inside the 10. It's going to roll to the 8-yard line. A punt of 52 yards, and most importantly, a net of 52 yards. 
7-15 to go in the second quarter. Texas leading Kansas 7-3 as Vince Young comes back on the field. Now, will, will Nielsen be able to play? Oregon and Oregon State. And all begins with our kickoff show at 11.30 in the East, 8.30 out west on FSN. And Benson spun down at the 14-yard line by Tony Stubbs. Benson now has well over 90 yards rushing. He has had 100 yards rushing games in a half 11 times. He has rushed for 100 yards in a game 23 times. Texas is undefeated 23-0 when Cedric Benson rushes for 100 yards. And he's close to rushing for 100 yards and a half for the 12th time of his story career. Look at this. You talk about broken tackles wow. all the way to the 27-yard line. Well, earlier today, Dave, he passed your old buddy, your old teammate Archie Griffin on the career NCAA rushing list. And he's uh, closing in on LT, LaDainian Tomlinson, and also another t former teammate of yours, Herschel Herschel. Walker. Look at the contact balance. Look at that. He gets the hand down to balance himself. His contact balance is phenomenal. That's why he has so many yards after contact. 50% of his yards are after the first hit. 104 yards on the half, 12 times now. 100 yards and a half, 24 in a game. Young on the option, cuts it back. And Rodney Harris makes the tackle on Young, but he got about five or six. He's 11 yards shy of the guy he used to call H. Oh, and, and Herschel is dynamic and special. And, I mean, you talk about guy. It, that's serious company now. Two-time Heisman Trophy winner, but Archie Griffin. Herschel wins the Heisman. Played with both of them. Quality guys as well as quality football players. And this Cedric Benson falls right in that litter. I mean, he is big time and legit. Second and four. Two linebacker blitz. Sweet. And closing quickly is Gordon. You know, he's the lightest guy on Kansas's squad. But he'll pack a punch at 170 pounds. Yeah, he's uh, courageous. It'll be third and five. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. Texas just one for four on third down. Seven, three Longhorns. Now Texas is starting to pound Kansas at the line of scrimmage, taking control of it a little bit. Young wants to keep, and he ran right into Charlton Keith. Still on his feet, but they, they blew, blew it dead. dead. Charlton Keith gave him a bear hug, and they whistled it dead. Well, what uh, Bill Young is, is did on this snap, he said, okay, you know, Texas is going to try to pound us. Well, that's the conclusion of the play, but from the very beginning, he blitzed. He ran blitzed. He, he put a blitz in there that would stuff the run, and then if they didn't run the football, it was still fresh to the quarterback. Bill Young brought eight at the line of scrimmage and brought them all up at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere for Texas to go. Leaving him uncovered, here's Gordon. And he's pointing to him open. Well, it's not Gordon back this time. It's Simmons back deep on the punt. And he makes the fair catch at the 37-yard line. So pretty good field position for Kansas with 4.09 to go in the first half. Low scoring, 7-3 Texas. And again, we check in with, let's just ask Adam Barman, their original starter to a shoulder injury. Jason Swanson last week to a shoulder injury. Yep. And, and you know what? It, it happened on that broken play. When either he reversed pivot the wrong way or the back went the wrong way, he had to carry the football. That's when he hurt his ankle. And Luke is in the game. Junior, he's six foot six, and Whoa. he's got it complete down the sideline. Goes Rido. Boy, when he let that go, Dave, you're thinking that might get picked off. Michael Griffin. Michael Griffin rolled the dice, and it came up uh, poorly for him. He came across trying to just make a play on it, and uh, it, it it didn't work out. Let's take a look. There's Griffin, and he, he just he takes a chance. And when you take a chance, he's not even looking at the football. I mean, he was fooled. He really didn't see the flight of the football. And as a result, Rideau gets a lot of yards after catch because of uh, Griffin's deal. And Luke's happy. Huh? Luke's got a big-time arm, 6'6", yeah. 225 pounds. He's been a great practice player. When he's had an opportunity, it hasn't translated yet on the 
field on Saturday. Simmons takes one in the flat on the hitch and runs for about six or seven yards before Cedric Griffin oh. knocks him out of bounds. Brian Luke, 6'6", 225. I mean, he is a prototypical. That is Peyton Manning size. I mean, Brian Luke stands in that pocket like a power forward. He can see over pressure. But his game management skills, he doesn't know what all 11 players are doing like Nielsen. There's a bigger propensity for a broken play, but he can make big plays with that powerful throwing. Hand. Second and four, Randall next to Luke. And Randall will have it very close to a first down. Texas is saying the football's out. They're going to lose that argument. Texas has been salty in the red zone defensively. In the this is the 26th opportunity in the red zone. The prior 25, they've only allowed 12 touchdowns. Less than 50% of the time, the opposition has scored a touchdown in the red zone. That's because Texas has such dynamic team speed. The holes close up a lot more rapidly. The field's compressed. And when the field is compressed, and you have all these big athletes with their closing speed. They're tough to score touchdowns on. Let's see if Kansas can get it done here. So again, only two seniors on that Texas defense, at least among the starters, and which should not be lost in last week's historical come from behind win for Texas. You talk about all the points they ended up scoring. Defensively in the second half, third quarter, nine snaps right. for Oklahoma State, minus five yards. Five three and outs. Five consecutive three and outs by this Texas defensive football team that helped immeasurably in that comeback. Clark Green is the single setback. It was a first down. Luke, three-step drop Whoa. in the slant. Derek Johnson almost had a pick, and no one was going to catch him. Boy, Derek Johnson is special. I mean, this guy has got all the gifts physically. Look at him make the read, and look at how quickly he closes to the football. Now, he's going to be aggravated. 99 times out of 100, Derek Johnson will catch that football. He has one interception this season. He has nine on his career. Look at, he's a, he's a candidate for every defensive award there is, and deservedly so. He is just so powerful. His hip snap, he has sudden, he has the ability to keep those jarring hits because of his suddenness. He almost got underneath that route also. Now it's an out route to Rido. Well, he broke on the hook zone on the previous play. Dave, he, he's so quick. He literally almost made a play on an out route. Yeah, he, he's he is very gifted. The thing, you know, a lot of linebackers have speed, but he has change of direction ability as well as the speed. And, and this is this is just a an, an excellent effort. Good throw again by Luke. He's got that powerful throwing arm. I mean, he can get it in tight spots. Third and five trips to the near side. Rito's up top. They need the seven yard line. Six coming for Texas. End zone shot, and it's wide of the mark. Simmons, the intended target, covered by Michael Griffin. Now, I think Mark Mangino's got a kick here because it's going to be fourth and about five. If we're fourth and shorter, he may try to convert and score a touchdown, but fourth and five, I think you have to take the points and, and close to within one. But if I'm Texas, I'm going to be heads up for a fake. He's already shown that he's going to roll the dice in this game, and he's going to, you know, he's got nothing to lose. You better have your coverage responsibilities if you're on the field goal. Lamb places it down. Beck kicks it through. 7-6. Seven, 6-6. Six. Six six, Luke did a nice job replacing Nielsen on that drive. And the Jayhawks come up with three points. And again, we go down field goal drive for the University of Kansas. I give Mark Mangino a lot of credit. And I make some comparisons between Mangino and Mac Brown in this. When, when you talk about the charisma meter and the likability meter, it, it's off the charts when you talk about Mac Brown. And people have gotten to know Mac Brown, obviously, over the years. A great football coach and tremendous person. You just love being around him. Right. Mark Mangino can work a room now also. Mark Mangino has got great character. He's a great person. And 
And, and Drew, he's been involved in two turnarounds, a major turnaround at Kansas State with Bill Snyder, and then he's at Oklahoma with Bob Stoops. So he knows of what he speaks. He had some goals this year, improved the turnover margin. They've done that. They're plus five in the season. Improved the kicking game. That's still a work in progress. Recruit better players and develop them. He's doing that. They have better athletes on the field, and they're being developed. Mark Mangino has the graph going the right way for the Jayhawks. Well, there's no question. Ramont's Taylor, five yards deep, and this time he put a knee down after he came out last time and got dropped just outside the 10. The Longhorns will have 225 on the clock and a full complement of time. Translates to 14 points. That uh, Jayhawk defense doing the job. Young throwing it up the football field. Looking for Lima Sweet. Good coverage by Ronnie Amati. Let's flash back to last week. 35-7, Texas has the ball at the 20-yard line. One timeout, less than two minutes to go. They go 80 yards and eight plays and score a touchdown. This game, they have a lead by a point, two minutes and 19 seconds, ball on the 20-yard line. What will Vince Young do this time? Last week, he was phenomenal. What does he do with the two-minute drill this time? Kansas brings four. Young wants a screen on the back side. And it was well defensed by Kevin Kane as Cedric Benson got a few. You know, the difference in Cedric Benson, the coaching staff's opinion this year, as opposed to the last couple, no major, no, no baseball, no Major League Baseball, no affiliation there. And he, he focused on football totally. He came to fall in the best shape of his life, totally dedicated to the game of football. And I, I think his performance has, uh, has shown that. Phenomenon, and uh, I give their, I give Mac Brown credit there. They, they bounced back after every year, every year yep. after disappointing losses to Oklahoma five in a row. I need not remind the Longhorn fans. That's character right there. That's fiber in your team. Here's Benson on third down, and I don't know. On the second effort, he got close. He needed to get to the 30-yard line. And where they're spotting him, Dave, he's a full half yard shot. And now if you're Kansas, you have one timeout left, you may utilize it here to get the clock stopped because it's easier to stop it when you have the football. Now taking a look at uh, Nielsen on the sideline, Drew, he's walking around a little bit. Interesting to see if he's going to be able to play the quarterback for Kansas. But here's Kansas defense stacking it up and keeping Benson short of the chains. And Texas is going to kick the ball away. Kansas is going to get another opportunity. Will they be able to do something with a little over a minute to go in the half? And there's a flag coming in. It's delay a game. And this is not the area you want to take a delay a game from your own 30-yard line. Now you, now you back it up. In a perfect world, you want to punt it with about two seconds on the play clock. Mac Brown realizing in conversations we had with him that this Kansas team, you can't be fooled by the numbers. The numbers do not show how well they have played this season. He knew of what he spoke. When you look at the tape, you see the effort and the hustle out of the Jayhawks. The pressure McGee gets it out of there. Gordon. Oh, you got a call. Oh, that, well, he got erased. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be a big penalty. That's yeah, going to be interfering uh, with the opportunity to field it. And it's going to, it's going to, Griffin's going to cost Longhorn some yards. Kansas is going to have great field position, Drew. They're going to have only a half a field to negotiate. Remember, there's no halo rule here. You don't have to give two yards to catch it, but you can't detonate before the ball's arriving. That was full detonation about two seconds before the ball arrived. Whew. So a high punt by McGee. Terrific punt. Kick catch Kick interference catch. by number 27 of the kicking team. Penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul, and it's the first step. I think it's number eight, not 27, but... Uh... You know, the only question was, was he blocked into him? No, he wasn't. Griffin had plenty of opportunity to stop himself, and he didn't. And he just got after Griffin, long, uh, after Gordon, long before the arrival of the football. Five. And that, that's their own 49-yard line. Only half the field to negotiate. Yeah, 46-yard line. Five penalties, 56 yards in penalty uh, yardage accumulated by Texas. There's two penalties for 10 yards against Kansas. Luke stays in there. And, oh. and uh, Cat 
catch is made at the 30-yard line, then he lost it. Going up high, trying to pull it in was Lionel Anderson. Heger. And are they going to give it to him or no? Yes, they're going to say it was a catch by Anderson. And Giger lit him up. Giger had tremendous contact. Mac Brown can't believe Greg Robinson. And, he, and these, Max trying to get him to overrule it. One official had great vision, the other one didn't. The head linesman, I guess he's the one that made the call. Catch, as the ball hit the ground, he loses possession of the football. I mean, that is not a catch. And no, he never had it. No, Texas uh, has a, a, a legitimate beef on the sideline. That was a blown call. Big time hit by Giger, the senior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Remember, though, Benson's fumble didn't go in uh, Kansas's favor either. Luke with time, throws underneath, complete to the 26-yard line. Yeah, how about Anderson? He didn't go off the field, Dave. He popped right back up. Yeah, showing some toughness. Look at Giger. He's picking out the fourth rib. I'm going to hit the fourth rib. Does he have possession? Ooh, you know, it's closer as you look at it when he came to the ground, but you have to have full possession and hit the ground. He didn't have full possession before he hit the ground. Luke on a three-step. And he gets uh, knocked to the turf. He was trying to work a double move. And he didn't have time for the double move. Tim Crowder was all over Brian Luke. Tim Crowder had three sacks last week against Oklahoma State. He was a force in that second half. And another young guy, true sophomore. 6'4", and he looks a little thicker than 255. That's a well-constructed 255 right there. And he's got a nice first step as well. And, you know, Greg Robinson talks about pressuring the quarterback, that it's an art form. It's almost like a martial art form, and it is. It's hand-to-hand it's -hand combat and figuring out a second move to get there. Gordon's on the field. He's in the near slot. They give to Green on a draw. And Green, you know, he stopped, Dave trying to make a cut right at the sticks. I think he's going to have enough for a first down. He was trying to bust it, obviously, and uh, he didn't realize where he was on the football field. If he lowers the pad level there, it's definitely a first down, and where the mark is, they will give it to him. Let's go now. Time management here. There's seven seconds. You're going to let it run down. Call the timeout. Get your field goal unit on the, on the field. Three seconds, two seconds. You've got to call it. It's a good thing they had that final timeout. Mark Mangino calls that timeout, and will they take the lead? Obviously, the first down was irrelevant at that point. You think he go back? Remember the short field Kansas would have had if they moved Cedric Benson's bobble a fumble. They said the ground caused the fumble, and not uh, Nick Reed as he punched the ball out of there. So things have a way of evening out. And this will be a 36-yard field goal from just inside the near hash for Johnny Beck. Hit from 39. He missed from 44 earlier. They are one for nine from 40 yards or more, but this is not in that dangerous range. This is makeable. To give Kansas a halftime lead. And they do. And they will have the advantage going off to the locker room. Beck punches it through. Nine seven Jayhawks at the break over sixth ranked Texas. They've played sound defense, and they've gotten pretty good quarterback play. Good elevation, because Texas came pretty close to blocking that field goal. You have to get it up, and he got it up very quickly, and Beck's happy about that conversion. I bet you Mark Mangino's happy, Jim. Team chances here in the second half, guys. Well, I like what he said last week. He went in the locker room at halftime, kind of like Daryl Royal once did. And he said, guys, you know what? We're going to win this game 42-35. They were down 35-14. Well, afterward, he had to apologize to his team. He said, I, you know, I sold you short. Right. Uh, it, it, absolutely. And Texas right away gets a false start. They uh, jump after that big first uh, play rush of the second half for Cedric Benson. Now they find themselves off schedule first and 15. 
Again, they run the delay to Benson, and again, he busts it through the middle to about the 46-yard line, tripped up by Tony Stubbs. Well, some big names keep falling every time Cedric Benson handles the football. He's moved ahead of today alone. Archie Griffin, two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Herschel Walker, the one the Heisman Trophy at Georgia. And LT, arguably the best running back in the NFL right now. Yeah, Archie Griffin, Herschel Walker, former teammates of mine. Uh, very different running styles. Benson's different as well. Benson tries to bounce this and getting into his legs is Gordon. And he's going to be about three yards shy of midfield. That's where Texas needs to get to for a first down. With a guy with contact balance and power, you want to make him run sideways. And that's what Kansas does. They make Cedric Benson. You see his shoulder pads return to the sidelines. When he gets his shoulder pads squared up to the line of scrimmage, that's where all of his strength and contact balance is. Good job of playing gap responsibilities by the Jayhawks, making him turn his shoulder pads to the sideline. That's a big, big key. Well, the bread and butter play is 64 zone read or 65 zone read. They're going to throw it here. Pressure coming. It's back oh, up in the air. Reed. And nearly picked off by Nick Reed. Man. Talk about an athlete. He almost he almost batted the ball to himself like a volleyball setter. You know, he sets the ball and he couldn't finish the set. But what a play. And as we said a couple of times already, this is a former quarterback. And watch him. He's going to come off the edge here. They're going to get some pressure. They're running a blitz on the corner. Cedric Benson's free release. Nick Reed bats it in the air to himself. Not quite. What a play, though. Gordon's back at his own 10. And this is very returnable. Now, Gordon couldn't get to the football. And it did take a Kansas bounce. It is down about the 23-yard line. A punt of just 30 yards by Richmond McGee. From Kansas's perspective, that is huge. Getting off the field because you knew Texas was going to come out with that tremendous offense and be fired up. Benson rips off a couple of runs, but they get off the field. Well, and, and the penalties in the first half really hurt Texas. Five penalties for 70 yards in the first half, almost three quarters of football field. And they have that false start that gets them off schedule after that big run by Benson. Little self-destruction there. And Brian Luke remains the quarterback. Clark Green standing next to him gets the handoff. And he gets a couple of yards. Derek Johnson made the tackle. And really drew a big key in the first half success for Kansas. As all season long has been their defensive play. Nick Reed tackle for loss. Coming off the edge, McMillan pressuring people. Gang tackling, McMillan and company on Cedric Benson. Here's the interception. Nicely done by Kane. You had Vince Young never seeing him. I mean, Texas, uh, Kansas's defense really throttled the Longhorn attack a lot of times. Luke short drop and again breaking on the footballs. Derek Johnson, he got his mitts on it. They were looking for Rideau. Not only is he a gifted athlete, but his instincts, which you really can't teach, are, are phenomenal. Yeah, he is, Drew. He has got uh, football savvy. He's got football IQ from the defensive side of it. Greg Robinson said, I've coached a lot of great football players. This guy takes a backseat to nobody. I've never coached a linebacker that has more ability and more humble about his ability and wants to be coached and wants to get better than that guy right there. Derek Johnson, a, a difference maker. Third down, well blocked, and it is in and out of the hands of Rido. He's got to hold that one, Dave. Absolutely, Drew. That's two drops. He had a key drop in the first half. You have to be consistent with the catch. And I'll tell you what, stepping up and playing pretty darn well is Brian Luke. He's delivered the football. Big in the pocket. Look at him stand tall and throw right over the pressure, and uh, you got to make that catch. And really, you know, I mean, it, there was a little contact, obviously. Cedric Griffin after the ball's arrival, but not violent. You have to be able to secure that. Vermont's Taylor at his own 35-yard line awaiting the punt from Kyle Tucker. Texas has nine on the line of scrimmage. 
is set up for return. And the fair catch at the 39 by Taylor will step aside. Early stages, quarter number three from Lawrence. The Jayhawks right now surprise. 3.30 out west only on FSN. Check local listings for the games and start times in your area. 9-7 Kansas here in Lawrence. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox. Play action for Young. And he throws the uh -oh. post route, and he's got a man out there. It's Jeffrey all the way to the 15-yard line. Tony Jeffrey, the senior from Houston. Got inside of Amadi and made the play. Amadi makes the tackle, but Jeffrey beats him on the post. Excellent protection because of the play-action fake. When Benson's rushed for over 130 yards, you get this kind of separation in the pocket. Vision unimpeded. Jeffrey beats Amadi on the post. Vince Young delivers a Steve Wright. That's the first time they've gone vertical in the game. All 40, set up by, by that running game. Yeah, 46 yards on the advance. And here comes Benson, and there's Toomey firing in the hole. The linebackers at Kansas right now run better side to side and straight ahead than I've than I've seen David in 10 years. Their athleticism as a unit defensively has gone straight up. And here, here's a good example. Defensive linemen do a good job of holding their gaps, and then Toomey came, comes flying in on the run blitz and makes the play. I mean, that's a that's a big kid that can change direction and close on a football. Zone read, and the hole got narrow quickly. And Young gets a couple of yards, that's all. Rodney Harris getting nosy, the free safety up around the line of scrimmage. Third down and a full nine yards to go. And here's where Kansas has been salty as well defensively. The opposition has only scored a touchdown 50% of the time coming into today's game in the red zone. 24 times, 12 touchdowns allowed. That's pretty good efficiency in the red zone defensively. Let's see what Texas does here. And David, Texas just one for seven on third down this afternoon. They show blitz, they come with six. End zone shot, and wow. Swede had it and lost it. They tried to pick on Amadi again, Ronnie Amadi. There's Ronnie and Dottie. Right. <laughs> Donnie's a minute older. <laughs> and you know... Ronnie looks up to his older brother yeah, also. That's right. But the reason they've had trouble on third down, Drew, they've been in a lot of third and longs, you know? Third and nine in that situation, virtually third and ten. And it really limits your playbook, particularly in the red zone. And, and Texas, as good a running team as they are, averaging over 300 yards a game, you know, they haven't been able to run the ball as well in the red zone as they would like. And great play by Amadi on sweep. Jeffrey will hold. Mangum will attempt a 32-yard field goal to put Texas back on top. Low kick. But he got it through, and the Longhorns go back on top, 10 to 9. See, saw, see, saw. Looks like one of those 76 battles between Green Bay and Chicago. <laughs> oh, black and blue to 10-9, Texas. Here's Gordon. He's played offense. He's played defense. He's on every special team. That's another flash Gordon right there, because that Gordon flashes regularly. He makes plays on that football field. I like that one, Dave. Hagens and Clark Green are back deep. McGee will kick it off. Texas offensively averaging 37 points a game. They've been held to 10. Hagens it up the middle. Hagens out above the 40-yard line to the 45. Greg Hagens. Nice little stiff arm on Mike, stiff arm on Michael Huff as he was taking it to the Kansas sideline and bench area too. Michael Huff has to check the fillings, make sure they're all there. Nice job by the wedge. They form a crease for him. And Hagens, the biggest key is get north and south. And he, he was rattling Huff's face mask, boy. He was in the cage. What Mark Mangino tell us earlier this week? He said we we feel like one area where we could match up really well with Texas is on special teams. And, and their special teams, Drew, have dictated field position. They had a 19-yard advantage in average drive start in the first half. That is monstrous. Luke goes play action. 
And he's got a man, Simmons. Good footwork. Out of bounds inside the 40 of Texas to the 39. How about Luke's poise? How about on the run, Drew? Throwing on the run very accurately. And this is a big guy. 6'6", six, six, two and a quarter. Get him out of pocket. Little play action fake. Naked bootleg. Get him out there with his tight end and his, and his fullback to throw to or his wide receiver Simmons and his fullback. And this man changed the launch point, got a little mobility, and that is just a nice touch. Gets those shoulder pads squared up, delivers. Nice effort by Ryan Luke. And Nick Cortero, the offensive coordinator, keeping him off balance. And they run a rocket screen. Simmons still on his feet, oh. lost the football. The ball came out at the 35-yard line. Texas believes they're on it, and they are. I think Aaron Harris knocked it out of there. It looked like Aaron Harris, the linebacker man, knocked it out of there. And, and you talked about changing the tempo and the pace, Drew, and, and that's what Nick Quartero had done, and that quick screen was a, was a great call. But you can't lose the football. And, and watch Harris right here. Watch him pursue it, pursue it, stay after it. Here he comes, backside, boom. And Harris is the guy. He makes the hit and knocks it out of there. That's just dogged determination, and that's just a violent strip. You know, he just clubbed him across the chest, and, and Harris is much stronger, and Simmons spit it up. Turnovers were even at one apiece, both on picks. Our Simmons up here in the booth wouldn't have fumbled that one. Tim's the man. No, uh, All security is cute, Tim's the man. Absolutely. Tim would not have coughed that up. Young looking for the post route again, oh. and Gordon Neal picked it off, and then on the rebound, it's taken away by Kansas. Running with the footballs, Harris, and a flag comes in. Boy. I'll tell you what, you talk about safety, or you know, safeties being in the vicinity, making plays. That's Rodney Harris's fourth interception of the season. He's got five tackles for loss and make it four interceptions. Very, very solid player. Personal foul, face mask add-on. And it's on Texas, you're right. Yep, now is it five or 15? Is it the big, violent face mask or just the five-yard incidental? The way they're moving, it looks like a big one. Here's the play. Steps up in the pocket. Gordon deflects. Or actually has the catch. And Jeffrey knocks it out of his hand. And then and then Johnny on the spot making the play is Rodney Harris. Gordon had it. Jeffrey knocked it clean. Harris stayed with the tip. And it is the 15-yard variety face mask. Vince Young trying to force this one a little bit. Because Gordon is right there. I mean, he's thrown into coverage. Great play by Gordon. You talk about covering some ground and closing. Gordon tips it. Harris catches it. Big play, short field for Kansas. They're now winning the turnover battle, which they had to do. Yep, tenth pick of the year by Young. Six in the last three weeks. Here's Green on a draw. Okay. And Green drags tacklers to the 33-yard line, so it's a pickup of five yards. Clark Green, a junior from Tampa, Florida. 17 interceptions on the season now for Kansas. Eight different players involved. That's Bill Young changing coverages, changing personnel groups, and pressuring quarterbacks. 17 picks, the most they've had, Dave, since 1987. Simmons across in motion. They fake it to him, and Green goes subterranean to the 30-yard line. You don't see back-to-back -back turnovers very regularly. And if the fumble, a great big play, fumble forced. Texas gets the football. The very next play, Vince Young. Gordon, Jeffrey does a good job of separating Gordon from the ball, but Harris is right there. Good things happen when you run to the football. When you rally and run around the ball, you can be the recipient of something that just happened for Harris, and that's hustle. Third down and three. Now, is that a fumble, or is it going to be an incomplete pass? Yeah, is that a backward pass fumble, or is it incomplete? It is a backward pass fumble, I guess. It, you know what? It, he tried to pump. Right. The official immediately signaled the signal where it went out of bounds. The I, referee coming over to talk about it. That's that's huge, Dave, because they're perhaps in four-down territory, fourth and three. Right. 
at the 33. I, in fact, I would, I would assume they would go for it down here. They're three and six this year. Right, right. And now, but it's, now fourth and a bunch, you're going to punt the football. Got to punt it away unless they, they're talking it over. It doesn't look like the, ch the call is going to be changed. And uh, it was a pump fake, but what happens is, it's where does the ball end up? Pump fake, but now it's a backward pass. As he tries to bring the ball down, he's throwing it behind him. It is a backward pass. That's a good call. That's right. Backward pass is a fumble, and the ball goes out of bounds, and they lose those yards. Ball's dropped, wow. and now you have a disaster. Mm. That is, ex that's like a turnover. That is like a turnover. Braden Johnson flew in there for Texas. Kyle Tucker, he dropped the snap. Yes, he did, and that's where it started. And, and that, that's happened to, to Kansas multiple times this season. It's basically what cost Terrell his job. You know, and, and, and Tucker, that's a perfect snap, and it just, he just flat drops it. Now, now, he's, now he's in trouble. Now he's running around. I mean, he's trying to make something happen. Brandon Johnson crushes him, and you're right, Drew. That is equivalent to a turnover because Texas has the short field now. That's a difference of probably 40 yards in where they would have ended up with a football. Benson, and that defense just keeps rising to the occasion. Kevin Kane, who has a pick in the game. One of those inside linebackers that gets a lot of play. Boy, there's been some crazy things happening in a short amount of time. Back-to-back -back turnover plays, and then a backward pass, and then drop the snap. I mean, that's in, in a, in a five-play sequence, we've seen all kinds of things, in which in the first half it was very cleanly planned. I mean, there weren't those kind of errors. All of a sudden here in the third quarter, they come in bunches. Benson. Hurdling and then knocking people over. He knocked over Rodney Harris, got another five yards to the 32 yard line. Well, you're right. It was like make that spare. And Benson was the bowling ball, and Harris and company with the pins. A little Edwin Moses here, up and over. And there goes Harris. And he made that spare. It was a 7 10 split, and he made it. Very unusual to see the 7 10 split made, Dave. True. Particularly after you hurdle. You know, yeah. That's, that's an Olympic event. I've never seen the ball bounce like that and then knock the 7 10 out of there. Benson this time gets rejected. Todd Hazelhorst, true freshman from Olathe. Second down and long now, Texas off schedule. You know, Texas has done a decent job on first down, but Kansas defensively has made a lot of plays on first down, putting Texas in second and third and long. Offset eye. Matthews gets a block for Benson, but again, not much. McMillan came off his block and made the tackle. David McMillan, a senior from Colleen, Texas. Another one of those 27 Texans on the KU roster. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Big third down play right here, and it's third and 10. Another third and long. That's why Texas has had a hard time converting on third down. One for eight. They need the 23-yard line. Kansas shows blitz. Blood cross up the middle. Young throws it up for grabs, and it's over the head of everybody. Nice job by Kansas. I mean, they did a tremendous job inside. Kane and Reed coming up the gut. Not much time to throw it. And let's take a look at Gordon on the edge. A little chuck, which is legal, rerouting him, not giving him, not giving Sweet any opportunity to advance down the field. Gordon, terrific job. And the pressure with the two linebackers crisscrossing right up the gut gave Vince Young no time to throw it. They may go here, Dave. This is gray area. Or they may, well, you know what? They're going to try the long field goal. They're going to bring in Mangum and try a 50-yard field goal. They got some wind at the back. He's 0 for 2, or excuse me, he's uh, 1 for 3 from 40 to 49. Yeah. He's got it through there from 50 yards away. Dusty Mangum makes it 13 to 9. He is fired up. He wants to go cover the kickoff. He's going to go make the hit. He wants to play a little linebacker. He says, DJ, take a playoff. Take a playoff. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to go hit somebody right now. Mangum. <laughs> 
Think Dusty Mangum's happy? <laughs> Looks like a Mexican jumping bean over there, man. You can't calm him down. He's the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going and going and going. Better save some energy. They may need him again. <laughs> really? 50-yard field goal. Richmond McGee to kick it off. And here's Higgins again. He had a big return last time. And he steps out of a tackle, spins to the 27-yard line. 13-9, six-ranked Texas leading Kansas in Lawrence. Aaron Harris forces a fumble on Simmons. Texas football, very next play, Vince Young. Gordon intercepts. It's not free by Jeffrey, but Harris is there to finish it. So now you have back-to-back -back turnovers, and then a muff snap on the punt. Texas gets the football with great field position as Tucker can't handle it. What a crazy sequence of plays that came rapid fire. How about this? In the third quarter this year, Texas outscoring the opposition 92 to 3 yeah, in the third quarter. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's good at time. We run, a, run the fullback, Austin Wabusi for a minimal game. Let's get it downstairs to Jim. Four points, that's it. Well, they've been there before, Noxie. Green gets a good lead block. And Clark Green with one of the better runs by Kansas today will have a first down to the 41-yard line. Aaron Ross finally brought him down for a Dr. Pepper game break. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Boise State, Bill, one of the winningest teams in college football the last four or five years. It's that field, it's that blue field. Mesmerizes people. Luke checks down at the flat to Green. And Green is bumped out of bounds by Michael Huff. But a good play on first down. They get five or six. That's a, that is a, a, a nice start to this drive. Uh, you, you really have to give a lot of credit to two people. Ryan Luke for executing it and Nick Quartaro for calling plays that he's comfortable with and he knows are within his skill abilities. I mean, it's, it, it's a nice job complimenting the, the play caller, the execution of the quarterback. Luke's got to step up, he does. And this one not handled by Clark Green. Green has been the primary back. Randall tried to go. And he's standing on the sideline, but that high ankle sprain obviously is bothering him. No doubt about it, Drew. I mean, there's no no question that Randall will be in the game now. And Kansas played a pretty good, uh, pretty good first half and in, in, into the third quarter here. Now this is a big, big third down conversion for Luke, and it's third and, and medium. You know, it's not it's not overbearing. To do a few things in this in this down and distance situation. Slot to the top. Green behind Luke. Texas brings four. Luke's in trouble, and he's going to be buried. Now the fifth man came in, Aaron Harris, to finish off the sack. Roderick Wright was disruptive. Just a pretty good job by the, by the front four and Harris on the blitz. It's the 13th sack all year for Come Texas. Come on now. Right now. Let's go on. Come on. Now, last time in this situation, a little bit of a muff of the, uh, a little bit. He muffed the snap. Let's see what Tucker does this time. Those hands warm. Good snap. And Tucker gets it out of there. Ramon's Taylor from his own 19. Great coverage. Oh, great coverage. Dropped at the 11-yard line. Tremendous job by Dominic Rue. 39-yard punt, minus seven on the return. Let's take a look at what Kansas did here. They're even Steven on the turnovers. The takeaways were nice, but they gave it up twice, too, so that kind of negates it. Three three and outs, not too bad. I mean, that'll, that'll work against this Texas defense. Here's where they've made hay. They're plus 13 as we speak on the average drive start, and, and this will even improve it backing Texas up on this drive. The kicking game has dominated field position for Kansas in their favor. Young keeps, he avoids Reed, avoids another, and chasing him down McMillan, and he almost ripped the ball out. He sure did. A nine-yard gain by Young, and he did plenty of that on his own. Vince Young came into this game averaging almost seven yards a carry in his career.
Yeah, and he, he is so special. It's that's the uh, the option, the, basically the the uh, the zone option there, and he does a good job of keeping it and, and putting pressure on the backside of the defense of Kansas. Vince Young is as good a running back as there is in the conference. And he's playing quarterback, and you have Cedric Benson to complement it. Here's Benson. Reed tackles him along with Travis Watkins. Let's take a look at what Texas wanted to do to win this football game today, Drew. We talked about the Napa Keys in the first half. Physical at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they've outrushed Kansas big time. You have to give them a plus there. Balance 130 yards. That's okay. I mean, that's that, you know, that averages out to 260 for the game. Handle Randall because of the high ankle sprain. They've done a good job there. Four yards rushing overall. They're on target with their keys to victory and that's why they've got the lead at this point but they have only 13 points and young dropped the football uh oh and now he lobs it to jeffrey who's got all kinds of room he'll run out of bounds at the 49 yard line how many times has young had to improvise today and, and, and off of a, this is the second time he's dropped the shotgun snap and, made, and got a fortuitous bounce and made something happen and you got jeffrey on to me and Young knows it. Now he's like, oh, I'm going to get out of pocket now. I've got Jeffrey, my receiver, on Toomey, the linebacker. And he just ran a little out and up, a little double move. And on the broken play, Jeffrey made it happen. Nice vision by Young and nice adjustment by Jeffrey. Young's going to keep. Reed along with Gordon. Boy, Nick Reed's played a good football game. The junior from Derby, Kansas, second leading tackler in the conference to Derek Johnson. There's a kid that, you know, as you think to the next level, perfect nickel linebacker. As athletic as he is, you know, he's not a big, you know, run stuffer, not a downhill nubber that'll knock you backwards, but plenty athletic. You know, you can bring him off the edge in the nickel, have him cover the back out of the backfield. He could even, you know, go in the slot. I think he's that athletic. 133 tackles last year. And it's a quick hit to Nate Jones, true freshman, with just his fourth catch this year. Rodney Fowler ran him out. This is where Kansas, at this time, stage of the game, is where Kansas, who doesn't roll as many players as the Oklahomas and the Texases of the world into the game, where it starts to become a challenge for them. You know, as the game wears on and they take all those snaps, and Texas is rolling more and more people at the line of scrimmage in and out, that's where the difference is. Mark Mangino is, is close. He's recruited some great football players. He just needs a few more to get to that echelon of player. Third down and four three-man front and now a corner blitz and young runs around it fowler came off the edge and young will get it inside the 30 to the 26 yard line for texas you're exactly right fowler was blocked by cedric benson cedric benson did not knock fowler off his feet but he disrupted him enough where young could make a miss and once uh, that occurred now he's off to the perimeter and he is a load. When you get him outside, he puts so much pressure on the defense. Watch Cedric Benson right here. He throws and just gets him off balance enough where there's no way Rodney Fowler can make a play. Now you have just an athlete. I mean, that's a safety, Harris, who's a sure tackler. Young makes a miss. Harris goes sailing out into space. They give it to Benson and flying in from the backside. Once again is Reed. Toomey's also there. It was Toomey actually flying from the backside. This is where Kansas is going to have to really dig down now defensively and make a stand. Because if, if Texas uh, just dumps this thing in the end zone, and all of a sudden it becomes, you know, a, a two-score game. It's an 11-point differential. Big, big challenge right now for the Jayhawks defensively. That's where that big offensive line can wear on you. Four or five will be back next year. Young whips it for a first down to Jones to the 14 yard line. And what you do here is you, you move the pocket. You have a quarterback as athletic as Vince Young. Get him outside, give him a two way go. Enormous pressure he puts on outside linebackers and defensive backs. Is he going to run it? Is he going to throw it? Through a nice, uh, accurate ball to Jones. Actually, they mark it, Dave between the 16 and 17 and where they've marked it it's uh, a little bit short of the first down 
It'll be third down and now they're going to measure now. Yeah, they're going to take a measurement. And if it is third and just a little bit is a throwaway down. Does Mac Brown go for the jugular in Greg Davis? Do they go for the big play? Because they have fourth and just inches with that big offensive line. I mean, it might be a good time to really take a shot at the end zone and go after the score. Big decision. Texas's offensive line with Scott, 6'7, 310. You, you played, uh, you, you got together with his dad last night. His dad's bigger than, than the son, Jonathan. My dad is, uh, he's king of the mountain now. Yes, he Six, is. 6'9 and 300 plus. And, uh, you know, you got to call him sir. You know, you just, you, and, and he, you know, I have a pretty good sized hand. I shook hands with him and he was up around my wrist. I mean, his paw was crawling up my arm. Man. There, there are not many people I've met who are bigger than, uh, than my partner, Dave Lapham, but Ray Scott, Jonathan's daddy, he's one of them. Yeah, and, and uh, NFL player himself. And he, he's a fine football player and his son is one heck of a football player. He said, uh, Ray said, Jonathan's coming back for sure. You know, some talk about the, will Jonathan go out early? Will these young Texas linemen go out early? They want to come back and get it done their senior year. Long snap count on first down, Benson. And nowhere to run. Reed's going to get credit for another tackle. I'd be shocked if he's not double figures already in this game, number seven. Yeah, he has made a ton of plays. Right now, Texas is starting to play keep away. They're just grinding the football and wearing the clock down. You hear the tick, tick going on, and now the clock becomes the ally because of this. Nice double. Get a little, eh, might as well just, you know, get the headlock. You know, Jonathan, get the headlock taken down. It's all right. It's all good. And that, it's, it's war right there. That blood is spilled on the back side of that zone play. Benson gets a block. And he spun down at the 11-yard line. Tim Allen stayed with the play, defensive tackle. And that may be the final snap of the third quarter. 13-9, Texas. And they'll be looking at a third and five when we come back. Well, I thought it stuttered, the big left guard. Just pancaked Reed, started to finish the block, and he's got a little nasty in him, just like his dad, the longtime, yeah. ten-time NFL lineman. Yeah, that's right. I Ten mean, year. I mean, you got you got sons of former NFL linemen. You're right. recruiting good stock. 13-9 Texas. You're watching College Football Saturday on FSN. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the round and five for Texas. They're two for ten on third down so far, Drew. And it's going to be third and ten. <laughs> it looked like somebody moved. May have been Justin Blaylock. Lyle Sendline right next to him. One of those two guys on the right side. The officials are talking it over because of a defensive player initiated the movement, caused the offensive line movement. It's on the defense, but I didn't see it that way at all. Dead ball. Dead ball. False start, number 62 on the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still third down. You're right, Drew. It's 63, not 62. There is no 62 out no, there. And no, he was. He was at right guard. Oh, okay, yeah. Line. Okay, send, line. yeah, send line. Did, well, they were both flinching. They both had the flinch going. And, and, uh, and eight penalties for Texas down. They're creeping up on a football field lost in penalty yardage. And uh, you can't have red zone penalties. You can't self-destruct. Penalties have been a big bugaboo for the Longhorns today for sure. Sweet and Jeffrey to the top. Two tight ends. Third and ten. Throw back to oh. Thomas who was there for a touchdown. And he overthrew David Thomas. They ran it earlier in the game and had it again. He would have walked into the end zone, Dave. They did. They had the misdirection throw back to the tight end, just like we saw in the first half, and Vince Young threw it a little tall. All the run fake goes to the right. Vince Young stops, throws back to the tight end. The offensive line is starting to get out there and, and uh, throw some blocks for him. But, well, I'm not sure if uh, Yao Ming would have gotten that one. Yeah, no, Yao would have had that one. <laughs> It might have been over Shaq's head. Yeah, it would have been over Shaq's head, but right. Yao would have had it. Yao is a monster. 33 yards away. Oh, Boy, what happened it. here? Hooked it. Did, that, did the ball, the air come out of that ball? It didn't go anywhere. Manga misses from 33 yards after hitting from 50. Mm. And it remains 13 to 9. 
That's why you can't get too emotional because you're going to go back out there and do it again. Consistency is what you're looking for. And did he double dribble this? Did he? Did his foot hit down before? Yes, it hit way behind the ball. And that's why he didn't get a very clean. He didn't get the foot on the ball cleanly. No, he did. I'll tell you, he just hooked that bad boy. Or did, some, or did the ball get nicked at the line of scrimmage? Kansas is reacting that way. But that ball didn't go anywhere. Yeah, he just, he mishit it. And there, I mean, there's a, there's a breeze. I'm not going to call it a big wind in his face. There was a breeze in his face, but that was odd. Still, a, uh, definitely, even if he makes that, it's a one-score game, still a four-point game. Clark Green lowers his pad level and spins ahead to the 26-yard line. A pickup of six. Didn't look like there was that much there. You have to give Kansas' defense credit in that red zone stop, but Texas hurt themselves as well. Ball start penalty moves them back, and then don't execute the throwback screen to the tight end when it was there. When those opportunities present themselves, you have to, you have to capitalize in the red zone. Texas did. Texas self-destructed. Kansas said, we had something to do with it. We're still in this game. We're coming after you. They fake to Simmons. They go play action. And Luke had his arm hit. Looking in Simmons' direction. It'll be third down and four. 13-9 Texas. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com for name brand products at clearance prices. It's all about the O. I think you're right. I think Roderick Wright got his, is the guy that uh, that got in there and, and, and messed with the throwing motion of Brian Luke. And sometimes that's when a quarterback can get hurt and the shoulder injury. And that's the last thing they need is another shoulder injury and elbow injury of a quarterback. Third and four. Luke with time throws a dart and Simmons couldn't come up with it and underneath Michael Huff he's a strong safety but Dave he runs like a corner he's one of the fastest guys on the team and well he makes up ground in a hurry and there wasn't a real uh, real big window to throw that football that's a luxury to have a guy with that kind of coverage ability playing safety you don't have to substitute nickel personnel in there he can line up and cover a slot receiver just like that drew because as you called it he has got cornerback skills playing that safety position they had him on mark clayton oklahoma man for man a good portion of that game between texas and oklahoma three catches for 19 yards he held clayton for Here's Ramon's Taylor, and that's going to be a clip. This one's going to come back. Punt of 47 yards, and Kansas will back Texas up. You saw starters. You saw Nick Reed getting up, covering the punt. Mark Mangino feels a punt's a 40-yard play minimum. You want guys out there that can cover it. You can swing field position so big, and that's what Kansas has done today in their kicking game. They have swung field position in their favor. They're in this game with only a four-point deficit right now, and a big, big reason why is they have done a heck of a job in their kicking game. Special teams have been special. An illegal block at the back on the return team, number 23. The penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and it's first down. I would think, Dave, if you're looking at this from Kansas's perspective, because I agree with you, Texas, especially the offensive line, they're starting to wear down Kansas. A lot of snaps now having taken place for Kansas, his defense in this uh, second half in particular. I think for this upset to come off, they're going to need an unconventional score. Right, right. Either defense or special team score. Right. Option look, Matthews leading the way for Benson, and he accelerates through a small hole for about three yards. Tyree, along with Roddy Amati defensively. The Dr. Pep for Texas, they're going to get their offense in gear. Backed up, tough field position. Whoa. Whoa, boy, that was dangerous because that was lateral territory and it was read beautifully by Tony Stubbs, the strong safety, third and seven. Sweden Jeffrey, that was messed up. I mean, Young threw it kind of between the two of them and 
I, I, it looked like there was almost an assignment error in the pattern that was being run. It just didn't look like it was clean at all. And now Texas finds themselves third and long again. And uh, they've only converted, what, less than 20% of the time on the day because of that. Two for 11. That's less than 20 percent. Mr. Robinson, that, right? that, that you were all over 20. it, Dave. That's why you got into Harvard right there. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's a, you got to cipher a little bit like Jeff Russell. <laughs> Young's come to run. Now he throws it and it is in and out of the hands of Brian Carter. Nice coverage by Gordon. He's flashed a little bit today, hasn't he? He really has. That, that is just a good football player, period. He is solid. He makes the play on defense, and he runs uh, back to return the punt. That young man is a competitor. You, you pointed it out early. You know what he is? He's fearless. If, you, if Coach said, hey, go line up at defensive end, he would shake his head. He'd all right, no Absolutely. problem. Absolutely. And this, this was a gifted baseball player coming out of high school as well, and he's just a pure athlete. He's around his own 40, waiting the McGee punt. And McGee Whoa. has it go off the side of his foot. This is almost right up the elevator shaft. And then it takes a Kansas bounce. They will have extraordinary field position at the Longhorn 39. The Horns leading Florence, Kansas. The Jayhawks hanging tough with the sixth ranked team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns. And they set up shop, the Jayhawks, from the plus 39 yard line, first and 10. Brian Luke out of the gun. And Rideau could not hold on again. Derek Johnson punched it out. Yep. Incomplete. Oh, they ran a they ran a corner blitz. They brought the corner. He left Rideau, and Derek Johnson picked him up on the shallow cross. Derek Johnson sees Rideau. Ball's there. Watch the right arm. Tomahawk chop. He, he the ball's out even before he chops him. Rideau knows Johnson's trailing him. That's uh, multiple drops for Rido. It's at least three in the drill. Yeah, he's, he's, had a, he's had a couple fall out today. And Luke has a complete underneath route. And to the 22-yard line goes Gary Hagans. His first catch of the day. Well, you know, Brian Luke has teased Mark Mangino and the coaching staff in practice. He hasn't followed it up in the game. I think this is his coming out party a little bit. I mean, and now he's making a statement. He's looking confident in the pocket. You can see a little swagger from the big fella in the pocket. He's making plays. He can smell this opportunity to make a big, big name for himself. These guys have not played like third and fourth teamers. Out and up, they had the end zone shot to Simmons. And you know what? He had his man beaten, and that wasn't a good, th a well-thrown ball there. Right. Because Cedric Griffin bit on the first move. He did. He bit on the first move, and it was a double move, and the pump fake, all of it involved. And you know where it all started? The offensive line gave him plenty of time. Look at the offensive line picking up the stunts, the twists of Texas. Vision totally unimpeded by Luke. And if he could throw it a little more out, he's looking for pass interference. He, no way. Simmons did get one hand on the ball, but couldn't get two. They made a nice block. Blitz pick up Clark Green. The running back. No, Luke's no. got time. He's got a man. Gordon. Did he wow. hang on? Oh, man, what a catch by Gordon. And then he fumbled the ball. And who's got it? Are they calling him down? I'll tell you what. He got hit. He got lit up. Aaron Ross smacked him. I cannot believe he held that football. Man, Aaron Ross was there and delivered a big hit. And they're saying that Kansas has got it first and goal. What a play by a courageous young man, 170 pounds soaking wet. This is the toughest 170 pound kid I've seen in a long time. Now, man, you, what a catch. Not the size of the dog in the fight, size of the fight in the dog, and this dog will fight you right here. I mean, he takes a shot, another shot. Of them. Man, I mean, and, and, and does he hold on to the football? The officials say yes. Giger made the second hit. Wabusi first and in goal, inside the two. And Wabusi gets the football. And he is he's, close. He's in on the second effort. It looked like he's in the end zone. Yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. It took him a while, but touchdown for Austin Wabusi and the Jayhawks go in front. And who set it up? 
Mr. Everything, Charles Gordon. Offense, defense, special teams, whatever you need. And Wabusi. Wabusi, Watusi his way to the end zone. Yes, That's did. his second score of the year. He did. Six feet, 235 pounds, thumped it in there. And that's a big extra point because it's a field goal difference now. 16-13 Kansas with 11.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Did Gordon hold on to the ball? One hit, two hits. Giger, ball still there. That's a catch. He's down. First and goal. What a play by Gordon. You know, if he's 170 pounds, 165 pounds over his heart. This dude's all heart. He's amazing. Last year, playing primarily offense, he had 57 catches and five touchdowns. And then look at the coverage on special teams. Terrell Brown blown up at the 10-yard line. Momentum is with the Jayhawks. Well, you know, you, you, you take advantage of opportunities. The lead with 11 minutes and 38 seconds left to play. Well, Texas not unaccustomed to adversity. Just uh, go to seven days ago. This is Bo Scaife. And he's to the 35-yard line. Which huge play right there, changing field position. Vince Young steps up, cool, calm, and collected, flirting with the line of scrimmage. Dumps the ball to Scaife. The Red Sea parts. They lose the rush lane integrity, and Vince Young steps up and dumps it to Scaife. Boy, was he wide open. They forgot all about the big tight end. First catch of the day for Scaife. 18th of the year. Benson next to Young. And Young throws to Scaife again. After picking up 25, he'll get 15 on that reception. Boy, the Bo Scaife show right here on this drive, huh? You know, you talk about the importance of the kicking game. Magnum misses a short field goal. Hunter kicks one right up the elevator shaft that you described, Drew McGee, giving a... Uh, Kansas an opportunity not taking advantage of points and then giving Kansas short field they score to take the lead kicking game special teams have been monstrous in this football game monstrous Scaife checks out Thomas comes in at the tight end spot middle screen was set up they wanted Benson but the ball was deflected was that Nick Reed who got a hand on it I think it was I think it was and I'll tell you, it was pretty good pressure right up the right up the gut too by Charlton Keith. Charlton Keith involved there. Middle screen, right up the gut comes Watkins. Watkins, actually, Watkins. Yeah, they, they kind of like combine Keith and Watkins. One got the left hand, one got the right hand on it. Second and ten. Quarterback draw, Young. Oh, man, unbelievable. He made three guys miss. He, You couldn't play two-hand touch with him in a phone booth. Yeah, and, and you know, he's so long. I mean, Drew, the, we talked about when he gets out there, he's gazelle-like. I mean, the way he strides, long stride is so graceful. But he puts, picks him up and puts him down so quickly. I mean, look at the size of his feet. I mean, he's a big man, but he's got the jackhammer feet to go with it. I want to steal one of your lines. When he was growing up, you played tag. Yeah, he, he was it. Yeah, he was never in. Never in. Yeah. You were in all the time. You couldn't catch him. Absolutely. Third down and three. I couldn't catch him in that phone booth. Texas needs the 39. Give it to Benson. There's Reed. He's going to lose a yard. Wow on the 10th tackle of the afternoon and the second for loss by Nick Reed. 64 zone option. You know, they run it about 20 times a game. When you need it, you run the 64 zone option and they have great call. Reed on a run blitz. He comes downhill, fills, big play. Texas and Mac Brown, they decide to play the field position. Uh, if you don't get it here and give Kansas field position with all the momentum they have, so now you're going to try to pin them back and let your defense make something happen. McGee will punt it. Gordon's back at his own 10. And McGee really got into this one. And it's going to roll into the end zone. Sixteen third Kansas leading Texas shocking Texas 
Series history, you know, they've been writing postcards to each other most of the times. This thing started in 1901, but they only met six times. In fact, the last time the Jayhawks won, 1938. I remember that. That headline was huge. It was big. I don't remember it, Dave. That's just a couple years before I was born. Of course, <laughs> you were in your third year in the NFL. <laughs> that's right. Without a face mask, and that's what's wrong today. <laughs> Luke on first and ten. Clark Green, you know, the, the stats aren't going to be glowing at the end of the day, but number 30's played himself a pretty good football game. He has. He's been a factor. He's been a, a big factor in this game. Jim Knox is always a factor. Not Getting here in the stadium, finally. <laughs> yeah, they play Washburn tomorrow night in hoops, the uh, number one team in the country. In the preseason poll, Simmons twisted down by Huff. This is where Kansas can grow up a lot as a football team, learning how to finish the close games. Texas has learned how to finish games with the record that they've accumulated over the last few years under Mac Brown. They've learned how to finish. Kansas in, is in the process of learning. If they could finish this one, what a major lesson learned. Pretty sizable snap right here, third and four. Texas brings four. Luke has a man. It's Simmons. Wow. He rolls it in. Then a missed tackle. Simmons in the open field. Simmons to the two-yard line. Finally caught by Cedric Griffin. First and goal. Kansas a pickup of 72 yards. The Texas defensive backs peeled each other off the play. They knocked each other off the play. Both defensive backs try to make a play on the ball, and they can't. They negate each other, and Simmons comes up with it. Ball is airborne. They peel each other off the play, and Simmons is off to the races. I think uh, Michael Griffin took another gamble and, and came up snake eyes. He's gambled a couple of times, and it's hurt him both occasions. Two tight ends. Luke's looking on the back side. He's got a man, oh. and it's caught for a touchdown wow. by Lionel Anderson. He took it off the helmet of a defender. Was that Eric Hall? I mean, it was a linebacker that, that Anderson was in coverage with. And how about Mr. Luke? Man, Luke is large today. Usually you get far down on the depth chart with quarterbacks. You're not going to get this kind of play because they don't get many snaps, many reps in practice. But Luke following up for Nielsen, who was hurt, both have done a very nice job. 22-13 Kansas pending the extra point. Beck pops it through, and we have big news in the making in Lawrence. Do we ever. Actually, it was Scott Webb who knocked it through. Man, and Anderson gets the separation. He's interfered with and still makes the play. What a catch. Throw back to the tight end, and it was the linebacker in coverage, Eric Hall. He interfered. Anderson said, still mine. America's fate. At CarQuest. Here, his second touchdown of the year. None bigger, however. Kansas 23 13. They're up 10 with 7.41 to go against sixth ranked Texas. Now, the Longhorns are going to have to flash back to last week's come from behind win against Oklahoma State. Difference See if they is, have enough in the tank. Difference is they're on the road. They're not, they're not, you know, rallying and responding and feeding off the energy of a home crowd that was frenzied when they executed the comeback. They're going to have to manufacture some of that and respond on the road. That kicks it off. Coming out is Brown, and he'll get just to the 12-yard line. Kansas's special teams, as Mark Mangino told us, are very good. They have dictated field position all day long. That was Derek Fide covering the kick. Watch right there, the safety, Michael Griffin. 
Watch him make a read on the ball. Close. Try to be a heat-seeking missile. He picks his teammate off the play. Simmons makes the catch. Now it's off to the races. Texas has recoverability speed. Prevent the touchdown. But then uh, very shortly thereafter, nice. touchdown pass. He made a big hit, Dave, but it was the wrong colored jersey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he just lit up a teammate. 15 yard differential on average drive start still. Here's Young. He dumps it off. Cedric Benson. And Benson smoothly out of bounds. A 12 yard advance to the 25 yard line. Nick Reed pushed him out. Well, now Texas showed all kinds of poise and confidence and everything that you need to come back last week against Oklahoma State. Do they have it in them again? Now here's the beauty of college football. Seven and a half minutes to go. The clock stops to reset after every first down. So you have an opportunity, a real opportunity if you're Texas. Incomplete. It'll be second and ten. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. Of course, this right now with Vince Young, still a developing quarterback, a sophomore, they have been a run-first team all year. I mean, Dave, they rushed for 300 yards on six occasions. Right. And they're, they average over 300 yards on the season. And now they're in a situation that, that still, you can still run the football. still run it some, but you have to throw it more than you might want to. Blitz coming. Sweet dropped the football. And Vince Young's struggles early on in the passing game weren't really all his fault. You had that happening. Receivers dropping passes. You had receivers running the wrong routes at the wrong depths. You had receiver and quarterback not reading the coverage the same way on different pages. Vince Young took all the heat, but really his young receivers weren't ready at that stage. They've developed some, but this is what Kansas wanted, to have to have Texas throw the football to win the game with the game on the line. Two of 13, the Jayhawks defense has held Texas on third down. They bring six. Young gets out of the pocket. He's going to have a first down to the edge. 36-yard line. That was all Vince Young. You know, it might be better for him. Instead of reading coverage, just read the front four. When you find a lane, take it. <laughs> he is unbelievable. When he tucks the football, it's hard to account for his speed. Nick Reed can run. Nick Reed, a former quarterback himself. Vince Young blew up his pursuit angle. Vince Young is ridiculous in space. 6'5 and fleet of foot. Young from Madison High School in Houston. Completing over 50% today for 224 yards. He's rushed the ball for probably in the 70, 80 yard range as well. Benson. And Benson tackled from behind by Charlton Keith. Good job on the backside. You know, you might want to put that one in the memory bank. Wouldn't be surprised to see Texas run a reverse of some sort. If the backside defensive linemen are going to chase like that and not stay at home, may be vulnerable for a little misdirection, some sort of reverse. Second and 12. This is where Keith came from to make that play. Young, nowhere to go. Now he gets rid of it, and he's got it complete. Tony Jeffrey. Tony Stubbs almost had the football. Tony Stubbs was in the area trying to grasp at it, and Jeffrey snatched it away from him. The only veteran among a young receiving group. Of course, they lost Sloan Thomas, Roy Williams, most notably a year ago. Watch Jay Johnson. Watch Stubbs. Stubbs like, oh, 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 man, I'm in position almost. I can't believe I didn't catch that ball. Get through my hands to Jeffrey. First and ten. Now Young vacates again, throws across his body, and it's complete to David Thomas. And they worked the tight end last time with Bo Scaife. They have two of the better tight ends in college football, and they hadn't been much of a factor until recently in this game. And, and they can stretch the field. They can run verticals as well as all the underneath stuff. And Young, again, once he gets out on the perimeter with that run-pass option, it spreads the field horizontally. The receivers stretch it vertically. I mean, they're tough to deal with. They can throw it. 
Again, they blitz, and it's batted up in the air at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. And Drew, we talk about the release point. Vince Young drops down. He's 6'5". If Vince Young comes over the top, that ball's not deflected. But he drops down to throw it. And he's throwing it from about six feet, not at 6'5". And as a result of that, that block ball was batted away. Charles Keith knocked it down. He's had a pretty good series, hasn't he? He has. He's made some plays. Young is 18 of 34, 255 yards. Good numbers, but I think if you draw it up, normal game plan, if you're Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for Texas, you don't want to see Young have to throw it in the mid-30s. You want to be running the ball now to close it out. Young in the backfield breaks a tackle. Look at this run to the 28-yard line, which should have been a loss of three. Turns into a seven-yard gain. And it was Charlton Keith that had him. Charlton Keith should have had him in the backfield. That's a defensive lineman. And, and watch. Here's Charlton Keith. Here he comes. He's got a complete shot at him. Left his feet and lunged a little bit instead of running through Young. And as a result of not running through him, Young runs through the arm tackle. What a play by a very, very gifted athlete. He's got 80 yards rushing now. Texas calls timeout. Third and four is what they're discussing on the sideline. Here's the AP poll. There's Texas, number six in that AP poll. And, you know, the only other one lost team, California's ahead of them. And this is what they have on the line. I mean, BCS staring them right in the face. And it's a 14 plus million dollar payoff. And they have been bounced out of the BCS yep. each of the last four years. And last year was Kansas State when they upset Oklahoma 35 to 7 in the Big 12 championship game. Texas would have gone to a BCS Bowl, but that knocked them down to the Holiday Bowl where they lost to Washington State. Absolutely, and a guy who's undefeated at 9-0, looking on, I'm sure, intently is Urban Meyer. If Texas loses, Urban Meyer, is he, he's, he's been critical about not getting the votes that he deserves because they're being loyal to their conferences as it is, and here's what we're going to see later tonight. A guy named Adrian Peterson, a true freshman who may be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. He went with that 10 300 meter speed coast to coast against Oklahoma State at a very pivotal time of that game. I'll tell you what doesn't add up right now. Texas has 506 yards offense, Dave, but they have only 13 points. And, and part of the reason is they've had to navigate 80 plus right. yards every time they've had it. It's been the special teams, the kicking game that has dictated the field position, made Texas go long field. And then Kansas' defense in the red zone has been dynamic. Third and four. Benson breaks the tackle. He'll have a first down. And they get the clock stopped with the first down at the 21 yard line, 5 32. Well, remember the last time in the red zone for Texas? They had an illegal, a false start, illegal procedure. They missed a throwback to the tight end, throwback screen. Nice blocking here on the draw. Finish. Benson finishes the play. Young in trouble, and Young's going to go down at the 29 yard line. It's Charlton Keith again. Wow. He said, hey, Vince, you might have, I might have missed you on that tackle for loss when you're running the option, but you're a stationary target here, and I'm going to finish you. And on, the, on the outer perimeter of the red zone, you cannot take a quarterback sack. You have to get rid of that football. You can't turn it over, and you can't take the sack. A little stunt. Charlton Keith comes inside on the tackle, the end tackle twist, and he gets clean. They run that ET twist again, Dave, and uh, this pass is complete to Swede at the 18-yard line. Gordon made the tackle. He fell down. Gordon was stumbling in coverage. That's why Swede could make the play. Gordon lost his footing, and he's so athletic, he still made the tackle, but he's upset and disappointed with himself because he lost his balance in coverage and was stumbling. Third down and seven. Young just avoids wow. the rush, makes a man miss toward the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. He made Nick Reed miss in the open field. How big is that missed field goal by Mangum right now? Right now, you're looking at a tied football game. Right. Vince right. He's Young. Come out. Watch the watch you make Nick Reed miss. Vince Young finds a lane. Here's Reed. Whoop. That is incredible for a guy that size to cut like that and the speed. He distorts angles of pursuit. He is something else. He really is athletically. 
Big extra point for Dusty Mangum. The separation right now, four. They don't have enough guys on the field. Texas on their PAT team. How can that be? How can you not realize that you just scored a touchdown? And they may, yeah. have, you know what? They have it's 12 delay a game. Oh, it's delay? Yeah. yeah like no way you're going to burn a timeout on an extra point. Nope. And that's something Mangum, after having blown the field goal, you don't want to get him out of sorts and out of rhythm. And now all of a sudden, you know, his mechanics are going to be the same, obviously, but it's not the same distance uh, extra point, And there was a little unsettling ball deal. Foul. False start on the offense. Penalties five yards and go for the try. You don't want it. One of the guys saw the play clock winding down. He just jumped. <laughs> hey, not to, not to get ahead of ourselves, 87 yards on that drive. Defense, despite giving up 500 plus yards for Kansas, has played very, very well. They need the offense to pick them up, and give them a blow. No doubt about it. And Texas has left some points in the field, just like the last drive uh, prior to this score when Mangum missed the, the field goal in the red zone. Mangum gets it through. So Texas back within three after the extraordinary run by Vince Young. That's one guy right there, Vince Young. I would hate to be in the open field and have to tackle to win a football game. That is a lot to ask. 91 yards rushing for Young. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. And by Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. Well, Vince Young, Drew, has 356 total yards, 91 rushing, 265 passing. Kansas has 329 as a team. He has outgained the Kansas Jayhawks, but all that's great, but the score is the key. Right now, he's down three points to the Kansas Jayhawks. So it's 23-20 with 4-12 to go. Let's get a Dr. Pepper game break with Bill Jones. Bill? Well, wow. Boy, Minnesota's uh, just fall from grace continues. Top 15 at one time just absolutely fell apart. When they lost to Michigan, it seemed to me, Drew, they, they had all their eggs riding on that Michigan basket. When they lost that football game, I think as a group, they said, hmm, our season's not what it could be, and they just fell apart. It seems that way, doesn't it? it sure does. Hagan's back deep at the seven yard line. He's ripped off a couple of nice returns already. He'll get this one to the 23 yard line. And let's go downstairs to Jim Knox. Okay, Drew, real quick, put it in regulation. <laughs> oh, boy, big, big series for the Texas defense and the Kansas offense. Who will rise to the occasion? 408 left. Clark Green behind Luke, the quarterback. He'll get the football, he cuts it back. Not much doing, and then he breaks a tackle. He broke a tackle of Michael Griffin, and he picked up about three or four, maybe five. What you have to do is wrap the arms. Griffin was a, w was a willing hit, but you gotta bring the arms with it. You have to tackle with your arms. You know, you gotta bring them, you bring the arms. You can't just lower the shoulder and try to block tackle people. Wrap those arms up and take them down. Green was slow to get up. Gordon is in the offensive huddle. Gordon, the nearest of the three receivers to the top. He's had an interception, had a big catch to set up a touchdown. Toss sweep to Green. Nowhere to go. Johnson's there. Also, Roderick Wright. <clears throat> Two of the veteran defenders for the Longhorns. It'll be third down. Well, like in baseball, Drew, you have to be solid up the middle defensively. Roderick Wright, the catcher, shortstop, Derek Johnson, solid up the middle on that play defensively. They stepped up. This is Derek Johnson time. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the game, down three points. The finalist for every defensive award you can name in the country is when he's looking to make plays. Watch the tight end, Anderson. He's right here. Derek Johnson involved with him. Luke throws. He's got Gordon. What a catch with a flag coming in. Diving catch at the 43 if it stands. Are they going to call? Plenty of distance for the first down to Gordon. 
Texas seems like looks like they're going to call offensive pass interference. Offensive pass interference on Kansas is going to negate it. Big play. Well, we welcome the folks in the Dallas area to Lawrence, Kansas. And that scoreboard is right, 23-20. The Jayhawks leading sixth-ranked Texas with 2.32 to go. Pass interference on the offense number three. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. And it's third down. He's Charles Gordon the can't believe technique it. to get free. Let's see, Dave. Let's see if there's a push off. And they're going to call the push. Gordon is, is wrapped up, and they're going to call him pushing right there on Brown. Wow. That's a... Uh, I'd say that's relatively ticky tack, but Gordon, um, he's, he's probably saying to the officials, look, I play corner, and I know I get abused worse than that. He's very upset about that call. That play, that offensive pass interference negating a monstrous reception by Charles Gordon. Mark Mangino can't believe it. And it's huge, Dave, because if you don't move the football from here, I mean, the first down is now 20 yards away. Now you're punting with the wind a little bit, but still you're punting basically from close to your own end zone. And you certainly don't want to take a chance on turning it over here at third and 20. You have to be smart as a quarterback. Johnson showing blitz. He started to edge up. He backs off. They run draw. And Green gets nothing. Well, and, and Mark Mangino thinking the same thing. After a tragic penalty like that, I certainly don't want to turn it over. I'm going to punt it and see if my defense can play like they played all, all game long. Robinson made that tackle. Wendy's high school Heisman program recognizes today's scholar athletes and citizens. Packets have been mailed to over 26,000 public and private high schools. Online nominations being accepted as well. So go to www.wendyshighschoolheisman.com today to nominate your Heisman hopeful of tomorrow. Greg Robinson's defense. Did a job when it had to, aided by a controversial call, I'm sure, for Mark Mangino. Mm, How about this? You need a play, you go to Gordon. They're, they, let me tell you another thing about this kid we haven't talked about, which is more important than anything. He's an academic All Big 12 athlete as well. Well, he's so smart football wise, it's not a surprise. I mean, he's got a fertile mind. And, and you know what? He may not be offensive or defensive player of the game individually, but combined, Gordon for Kansas is the player of the game. He's got an interception, he's made big plays. Of course, that penalty is crushing to him and as he's pacing the sideline, he's beside himself here. Really. Tucker's got to handle the snap. Aaron Ross around midfield. Oh, and this is it. off the side of his foot. And it's going to go out of bounds around the 49 yard line, 48. So great field position for Texas, and they have plenty of time. 153 to go with one timeout. The only fly in the ointment for the kicking game has been the punt team. Kyle Tucker dropped the perfect snap that gave Texas a short field. And when they needed a big punt right there, Tucker could not quite come up with it. Texas now, they're going to have to get themselves in, in, in good field position for Mangum. He missed a short field goal on the possession prior to the touchdown drive by Texas it's coming down to the kicking game as it does in a lot of games I don't think you have to throw it every down Young's back there and he's going to be sacked back at the 45 yard line Keith again Keith was there again along with Jamile Ashley well, Keith is possessed talk about coming off the edge plenty of time to throw it you know you have to have a clock in your head and get rid of the football you can't take those sacks. I mean, Vince Young is so sure of his abilities to make a big play. Sometimes throwing it away is not a bad play. Live for another down. Now the clock eats up about 30 seconds between plays, and that's incomplete. Jeffrey couldn't pull it in as he dove at the 40-yard line. It's third down. And 17, maybe 18. Nice rush by Ashley. He got inside of Jonathan Scott at left tackle. I thought Jonathan Scott could have gotten called for holding. There was no hold. He took Ashley to the ground. Now it's four down territory everywhere for Texas. No more punting. Four down territory for the rest of the game. Jeffrey, the senior in the slot. 
Wow. Ball's dropped. Young picks it up. Throwing it for Jones downfield. That's over his head. Fourth down and 18. That's all that separates Kansas from one of the biggest upsets of the year. And, and boy, you look at the timeout situation. Kansas has all three. Texas only has one. You have to take something and get get part of it. But Kansas's defense was so good. There was nowhere for Vince Young to check down and, and make up half the yards. He had to try to go for it all. So now it's fourth and 18. You would have preferred to see fourth and nine or 10 pick up at least eight yards on third down. Kansas's coverage was too good. Rushing three and dropping eight. Young needs 18. He's going to try to run no for way. it. He's going to have wow. the first down. Wow, Reed missed again in the open field. How about this guy? One minute to play, 33-yard line. Vince Young on his own picks up a fourth and 18. Un Unbelievable. You rush three and drop eight into coverage. You don't want to leave your coverage and rally to the quarterback too soon. But Young just says, I'm, I'm going to do this on my own. And, and there's Nick Reed again. And boom, Young is by him. Incredible effort. I mean, that is, he is such a factor in the open field. Glides away. Young checks down. And ripped out of bounds is Benson. Ashley wrote him out. 105 yards rushing for Young, 161 for Benson. They have 548 yards of offense, but it doesn't mean a thing because they trail 23-20 with 53 ticks left. I think that's the fourth time in their histories together they've combined for over 100 yards rushing in the same game. And I'll guarantee you they hadn't lost any of those prior three. Let's see what happens here on number four. I don't think I've seen a fourth and 18 quarterback tuck it and run for the first down. I swear to goodness, I don't think I've seen one. And Young breaks another tackle, but the clock will roll. There's only one timeout left. Well, this is quarterback counter, Drew. It's a design play. Watch the lineman pull on the backside. And they're going to lead Young through the hole. He's so fast, he outruns all his blockers. What an incredible athlete this guy is in the shotgun. This is a two-back set and two pretty good backs, Young and Benson. They got to save the timeout for a field goal attempt. Jeffrey. And he threw it out of bounds. He got the first down to the 21-yard line. 17 seconds left. And they'll have an opportunity, Dave, to take an end zone shot or two. Mangum on the sideline is a four-year kicker, but he's missed from 33 today. And to be honest, he has missed some kicks this year. Yes, so he's not automatic. No, he's not. And he's looking for his opportunity for restitution. Rodney Fowler missed the tackle for Kansas. Rodney Fowler can make the tackle, keep Texas in bounds. It's a different deal, but Fowler can't make the tackle on Jeffrey, gets out of bounds. Mark Mangino just hoping and praying, and you know, it, it is. I, I think the one thing now, you're, you're on the cusp of the red zone. If you're Vince Young, you can't take a sack. You can't turn it over. You have to at least give your kicker the opportunity to kick the field goal. Well, our Cooper Tire. Player of the game is Nick Reed. 13 Defense, tackles, yeah. pass breakup, several tackles for loss. He's our defensive, defensive player, of the, player of the game. And, and he's had, he's been involved in a lot of plays. He's missed a few tackles, but it's because it's a, a Vince Young's excellence, not Nick Reed's uh, troubles. Young is so amazing, but you could see Nick Reed was involved in everything. He had his nose analyzing and in, in deciphering plays and making reads and getting to the ball. Very active, very athletic player. Good instincts, boy. And I, I'll tell you, there's one guy, a former quarterback himself, Nick Reed. I'm, he's looking at Vince Young and probably thinking, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What kind of athletic ability does this genetic phenomenon have? Yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. Here we go. 17 seconds left. They move the pocket. Young throw it toward the end zone. It's got a man. Wow. Touchdown. Tony Touchdown, Jeffrey. Texas. The senior, Tony Jeffrey. Oh. Can you believe this? Two weeks in a row for the Longhorns. 
Fowler in coverage. Fowler missed the tackle on Tony Jeffrey, and he got out of bounds. And then they go right back at Fowler with Jeff Young rolling to his left, makes an incredible throw. Shoulder pads up and delivers the ball to the senior. The only guy left of that miraculous receiving core, and he steps up and makes a play. And Vince Young, he's a lot taller than 6'5 right now. He looks like he's 9'5. And you know what? This entire stadium, I mean, it's like you can hear a pin drop. Oh, boy, they were going bananas a moment ago. Mangum kicks the extra point, 27-23, Texas. Well, they just got kicked in the belly. Everybody in this, I mean, all the air has come out of this stadium. Vince Young on the edge. Is he going to run it, throw it? He's going to throw it. And just throws a dart. I mean, just lost the thing accurately. Perfect. That was decent coverage right there. Now, you know, I mean, Rodney Fowler is, is there, but Vince Young throws a perfect ball, and Rodney Fowler just... He never makes a play on the ball. He's in position to make a play, but never makes a play on the ball, and Jeffrey does. Jeffrey found the ball, Fowler couldn't. Touchdown, Texas. But how about Vince Young? It's fourth and 18. Hey, that's a no-hoper. Fourth and 18, he does it on his own with his feet. When he tucked it, I was like, no way. No way, and, and boy, he made it easily. Because I saw Nick Reed in the area, and I thought, you know what, boy, Nick Reed, you know, the, the, you cannot discount that young man's athletic ability. Well, you know, Vince Young is off the charts in terms of genetic marvel. 22 of 40, 289 yards in the air. On the ground, 19 totes, 114. And you know the uh, impressive thing about him, Drew? He was totally unflappable. I mean, every single snap, he never changed his expression. 403 yards total offense for Young. That's two weeks in a row. He's, he's had 400 yards offense himself. He had it against Oklahoma State last week. Mark Mangino just can't believe it. I mean, it's a devastating scenario. Well, this team has had so many leads and just can't finish. When they write the synopsis of this season for Kansas, they kick it on the ground. Kansas is going to score a touchdown. There. Right, Field goal touchdown. does nothing. They got one snap. Right. But when they write the synopsis, as you look at this touchdown to Jeffrey, it's going to be near misses mm. here today. They were up 30 to 5. Dave earlier this year on Texas Tech and lost 31 30 rolling to his left Drew as a right handed quarterback to throw this ball as accurately as he did to the sideline. I mean that is just boy Fowler is not in bad position. I mean that was decent defense but the quarterback and the wide receiver Young and Jeffrey just executed better. They made a play that is a difference maker in a close game like this. Vince Young she's forever young. How about that guy? Now Luke will throw it. And they get out of bounds with one second left. They're, tell you. they're trying to get, I mean, that was by design, obviously, trying to get it at least in the neighborhood that you can reach the end zone. Right, you can't, you can't throw a Hail Mary 80 yards in the air. Very few guys can. Now at least, and with, with the, uh, the arm strength that Luke has shown, this Hail Mary, I mean, there is going to be an opportunity. But how about the resourcefulness of Mac Brown and his coaching staff and the players? Calling the plays is one thing. But Vince Young, the execution of said play, is creating something when it's defended. You can't buy that. Final snap of the game, barring a penalty. Luke cranks it up. Ball's deflected, incomplete, and Texas has held on. They win in the final seconds, 27-23. They improve to 9-1. Unbelievable game. Snatched victory from the jaws of defeat right there. Two weeks in a row. They were down 10 late. Matt Brown, Mark Mangino getting together. Our FSN College Football Saturday will continue a little later on. Number two, Oklahoma, Nebraska. For Dave Lapham and Jim Knox and our entire crew, Drew Goodman saying so long from Long.